Good afternoon and welcome to the World of Warcraft Q&A panel at BlizzCon Line. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm your host, Scott Johnson. It's my second time here and I've been podcasting for nigh on to 15 years. Been paying a lot of attention to this game. And uh, there won't be any big surprises to the World of Warcraft development team that I'm here to ask the questions submitted by the WoW players around the world. So uh, thank you so much for submitting your questions. There's some amazing ones in here. Can't wait to get uh, get to them. I'm sure they used to getting questions from me by now. So we're going, going to go ahead and get started here with announcing who our team is. Speaking of the WoW development team, we have six of their leaders with us today. Executive producer John Height, game director Ian Hazakostas, lead producer Holly Longdale, art director Eli Cannon. We have lead narrative designer Steve Denuser and lead software engineer Brian Birmingham. Thank you all for being here. All right, let's get started. It has been a very exciting con so far, and I'd like to start with Steve. Uh, a lot of players want to know more about Sylvanas and Anduin. Uh, today was shocking for many of us. Uh, in your first looks at the Chains of Domination, we learned that she's going to be a boss in the next raid, and uh, the Sanctum of Domination is what that's called. And in the cinematic for the patch, Anduin went a little nuts. Uh, everybody wants to know more. Can you elaborate on what we saw and tell us more about what you uh, have in store for us with these characters? A little nuts. Wow. Well, uh, yeah. So the the story of Anduin and Sylvanas uh, and their relationship with the Jailer, that triangle is really foundational to the story of Shadowlands. And it's something obviously that unfolded from the very first moments of going into the Maw uh, all the way through our ventures into Torghast, trying to uh, free our allies. Uh, and it really culminated in the the 90 time frame with that uh, that cliffhanger moment of Sylvanas holding the sword out in that pose and and uh, Anduin challenging her, um, you know, saying this is, the power's in your hands. What are you going to do with it? And we wanted to leave it at a cliffhanger there, but not for too long. And so it's awesome for BlizzCon Online to have that chance to now show you what happened. Uh, and so we learn what happened, right? We see that uh, Anduin was in fact dominated and we understand now why the Jailer was looking for someone with those qualities. They needed to be someone who could walk in the front door of Bastion and meet the requirements of that. So they needed to be that hero. Uh, they needed someone with Anduin's heart to be able to do what he did. But of course, Anduin wasn't in control of his actions there. And uh, so we see him attack, speaking with the Jailer's voice. Um, but in that moment, we do see, uh, as the, the kind of sigil is drawing out from the Archon, we see that moment where Anduin does regain uh, some control, and he's horrified by what he's doing. So, you know, that tells us that Anduin's still in there. He's not uh, gone by any means, but then we see the Jailer's influence kind of tighten the, the leash again and uh, have him complete his mission, which is to bring that, that Covenant sigil to the Jailer, and we find out that that's a key that he needs. And as we play through Chains of Domination, we'll find out more about what that entails and how that fits into the the Jailer's ultimate plan. Sorry, there but, was this very there was this moment when that was happening. Uh, when you you just described it, when Anduin kind of comes to himself again, mm -hmm. looks horrified about what he's done, and then the Jailer remotely sort of amps it up again, and you you see those those runes on his on his armor kind of ignite, and he goes back into that into that uh, sort of uh, place that we just saw him in. And my question is. When he walks past Uther on his way in there, or Luther, as everybody calls him, uh, we call does him Uther know this? So it, it, can you speak to that at all? Did Uther know what was happening there? Or is Uther just feeling bad because he knows Anduin and you know is having a little guilt there? Well, there's there's a couple things going on there. So there's number one, there's just the look on Uther's face, which I've already seen a hundred memes about, and that's awesome. Uh, but you see what his hand does. He reaches up and he he touches that wound that's on his chest, the wound that was made by a weapon of the Maw. And so on some level, Uther recognized that power. And, and I'm sure it was not lost on him as well that there was this, this kingly figure walking in with long blonde hair. And uh, that certainly stirred some memories in him as well. So uh, all of those details, you know, those are the things that we just pour over as we're, as we're creating these cinematics. And we have an awesome cinematics team, Taryn Gregory and his team. Just doing phenomenal work. I think the the quality of what they've done in uh, in Shadowlands in particular has just been amazing. The little nuances, and so you see those moments of Anduin being horrified. You see when Sylvanas looks at him and kind of is 
in her eyes is pondering what's going on. So even though we find out that she did the thing that she did, it's clear that there's a lot more going on the surface and, and that will be explored more fully throughout the course of Chains of Domination. And yeah, it does lead to uh, that final conflict within the Sanctum of Domination, the Jailer's Stronghold, where Sylvanas is the last boss of the raid. And I'm not gonna give any spoilers, but what I will say is that that confrontation, I I can say that it, I think it's gonna be one of the most epic moments in, in our raiding because it has so much story behind it. And we've spent so long now getting to know Sylvanas, seeing all these facets of her, the hero, the ranger general, the banshee, now this maw empowered form that was able to go to the top of Ice Crown and throw the frozen throne at, at Bolvar. You know, all of those facets will come into play in this encounter. And it's not going to be a simple matter of walking in there and, and uh, you know, playing our swords against Sylvanas. Uh, there's a lot of story wrapped up into that. And uh, it's going to be a super exciting confrontation. Yeah, maybe she'll have a moment to have that eye looked at. She hasn't had a, uh, had anything done to it since it got cut. I well, hope she's okay. It's, uh, you know, you should you should count the number of characters in Shadowlands who are carrying one kind of scar or another because it's a lot of them. <laughs> Well, they are their scars, as one famously said. Uh, Holly, let's move to you for a second. Um, Classic is now going to get Burning Crusade uh, right along with it. Burning Crusade Classic was announced today, and uh, we got a, a great opportunity, or yesterday rather, a great opportunity listening to you talk about it. Many players are asking a lot of questions about that. So, for example, when moving from Classic to Burning Crusade, while keeping a copy of my character, let's say, on Classic to play separately, What's that going to look like for my gold or my items in the bank? Am I going to see any differences when I first log into that character on the two different realms I'm then on? And will they then go off into their own separate timelines, never to join again? Great question. Um, so I'm going to do my best to explain this simply because uh, we didn't we weren't able to get into a lot of the details. So for you, I'm gonna give you an example of how it's going to work. Uh, in my case, I'm going to use my very original character named Holly uh, on Wormrest Accord. Um, and I've got a level, I've got, we'll assume I don't play a lot of alts. Let's just say I have two characters. So I've got a level 60. When I log in on pre-patch, I will log in at that moment in time, we are taking a snapshot of the character when the servers are brought down at pre-patch. That snapshot is going to be copied to classic era and for Burning Crusade and the current server you're on. So when you log in, I log in, I see Holly on Warm Rest Accord. I'll see an option when I select Holly. Do I want to move on into Burning Crusade Classic or do I choose to play in Classic Era? If I choose to move on into Burning Crusade Classic, I click the button, I'm off and running. So if I select my level 30, also originally named Halia character, um, and I decide, okay, I'm, this is my character, she's 30, I'm going to go to Classic Era and continue leveling up and enjoying my experience in Classic with my friends, I select Classic Era. So what that's going to look like for me uh, on Warm Rest Accord, that's moving on into Burning Crusade Classic, is that character will look inactive. Then I will go to the Balanet app, I will install Classic Era, then I will log into Classic Era to Warm Rest Accord, the same server, and then I will be able to play uh, Halia. I will have the same gold on both, I will have the same friends list on both, everything will be uh, completely the same. And then I will also have the option to play Halia on both. I can pay a fee and, and activate my clone on Burning Crusade Classic in that case and play both and they will both have the same gold amounts that we had uh, in the snapshot, same friends, etc. So it should feel the same and feel seamless. We're, we're Taking a, making a lot of effort to make it as smooth and as simple as possible. Well, it seems like a lot of care has been taken to uh, to make that happen. And and the first thing I thought of when it was announced was, all right, how are they going to handle this? They got these <laughs> players that want to stay in vanilla forever. And there are some that clearly want to keep moving forward. And who knows how forward that en ends up being in the future. But for right now, for Burning Crusade, uh, it running through my head was all these ideas I could think of that you guys might try to make those people happy or to keep them happy where they are. And it sounds like this is uh, the right way to do it. Do you guys feel like you, you've 
you've uh, you've explored as much as you can. Or I guess the game's not out, so maybe there's still time to explore more and get feedback. But you feel pretty good about how that's going to launch in that state. I think we feel pretty good, but of course, beta will tell us a lot more. So that's coming around the corner pretty soon. And we'll be looking for feedback on some of the decisions we have made. And of course, where we can, we'll improve it uh, and make it the best possible experience uh, as we can. We do expect the majority of players are going to go into Burning Crusade Classic. So we are putting a lot of effort on both sides to make it as smooth as possible so that you can just jump in and play. Uh, Brian, I got one for you. It's somewhat related. Uh, How will high population numbers be handled in the Burning Crusade Classic? The zones are small and funneling everyone into a single location has been less than optimal for the release experience anyway. Um, Exactly how do you handle all the bottlenecks as well as heavily shared mobs and questing areas, uh, dailies, that sort of stuff? Well, to a certain extent, uh, there's a desire, I think, to, to recapture that challenge of fighting over contested spawns. That's that's part of the gameplay. But at the same time, we do recognize that this is you know a, a high population of players, and we want to make sure that the experience and uh, is is enjoyable. And so we have made optimizations and improvements to make sure that the servers are stable. We uh, were able to leverage those to make sure that on garage was stable and make sure that we can support high populations of players and make sure that the game is playable. But that that experience of like uh, there's a, a spawn like of a, a mineral node or a rare herb or a, a netherwing egg and I want to get that and someone else is competing with me for it like that's part of the goal of the game and so we don't want to like uh, make any major changes to that but to the extent that we have uh, higher populations than we normally than we normally did we are willing to make like some targeted changes if we see that there are problem areas we did this with black lotus during classic and so if we see that there's some particular problem area we will take a close look and see if there's something that needs to be adjusted for the fact that we have large populations all right, let's jump back into Shadowlands for a second with a question from Volrin from the Deep Pockets Guild. I could use some gold. Maybe I need to go there. Uh, will be re- or will we be receiving more race slash class combinations? Given the customization is such a major theme in this expansion, Ian. Let's go to you. Sure. So, I mean, I think player agency and choice are certainly a major theme of the expansion, and one of the ways that's expressed itself has been customization. We've seen a wider than ever array of cosmetics and other options for players to choose among. But part of what we've also been trying to, to reinforce and maintain is differences, is playing is, is a world that consists of different paths. And whether it's everything from class design and the return of abilities to us carving out spec niches, we want to maintain a world where there isn't exact symmetry. Things are cool, but they can be cool in different ways. Now, we've over the years gone back and re-examined race class combinations periodically. We've certainly reached a much more permissive open place in the modern game than was the case in Classic or Burning Crusade. And for now, we think we've gone about far enough. You know, I think there, there are cultural differences, there's elements to these races' histories that preclude, for example, you know, certain races from being demon hunters or certain races from being warlocks. Um, and those are, are not lines we're looking to cross. But it's something we always re-examine going forward. So I think we don't have any plans in the middle of Shadowlands to change anything there, but I would never say never about any of these. I think some people are surprised that um, that whether you're wearing cloth or plate, that you're going to be able to wear your Covenant's appearances uh, across the board. That surprised a few people. Surprised me. Um, does it surprise you that you guys decided to go ahead and make that a little bit homogenous per covenant? I, mean, I think it's not. It's that's one of those things that is a reflection of identity that we started really to broach with the, with heritage armor. That was one of the first sets of armor that could be worn regardless of your class, regardless of material type. And when it comes to pure aesthetic expression, we want to give players more and more options there. And you know, if you're someone who's looking for, you know, you're a, a you know, plate wearing warrior, but you want more of a flowing robes vibe as you're going into combat. We have gameplay reasons why we don't want to let you transmog the entire range of cloth. But for these cosmetic sets that we introduce, the more options, the better. Well, I love that stuff. Uh, Cynthia Lee wrote in, I think this is a good one for John. And uh, uh, this is very interesting. And, and I think actually I got a lot of this on the side, people saying, hey, you should ask this question. I'm like, well, I'm not really going to ask anything that I can't approve first, but turns out a lot of people asked it. World of Warcraft basically got me into the gaming industry, says Cynthia. I am super interested to know, how did your workflow change during this pandemic year? John, how did that go? Well, that's a great question. Um, I think maybe first I'd like to start with how it changed us and maybe the way we think of what we do. Uh, Like everyone, 
you know, this all happened very suddenly for us. You know, one day we're working towards getting the alpha, the next drop for the alpha out and, and, and looking forward to getting Shadowlands uh, complete. And then the next day we're all hustling to get our, <laughs> quickly get things packed up and, and move to home. And um, I think at first it was just sort of settling in and, and trying to connect with each other through Zoom or, you know, uh, whatever medium we had. We had really great response from our IT, our IT team. Uh, and then the team kind of reached out to each other, you know, to find comfort and, and just feel connected in some way. But I think the, the most important thing for us is as we saw, you know, the, the, the horrendous events that were happening around us uh, and, the, and the isolation really that was happening, uh, not only to us, but to everyone and, and certainly to our players, we, we found a purpose for ourselves. You know, it's like, hey, we can connect people. This is what WoW started with. This, this happened before, you know, social media and Facebook. And then we have a way to bring people together, give them something to do and to pass the time um, and, and, and hopefully reconnect with friends and, uh, I think it was it was it was really cool in a way to know that we were able to do something that was actually going to bring some peace and, and solace to people in, in a time that was pretty troubling, and still is, you know, for many folks. And, and, and we certainly feel extremely grateful uh, for the ability to do this. In terms of you know how other things has changed in our workflow, I think that we're all considering well in this when this is over <laughs> and we can all get back together. You know what will that look like and there's some aspects of, of being at home that, that we enjoy you know for many the long commutes aren't there the uh the ability to to easily connect with your family and friends is is, is really cool um and so i think we'd like to have some aspect of that as i'm sure a lot of folks would um, the hard parts are really, you know, I would walk down the hall and you know, like Brian's literally like three doors down from me and I could walk into the area where he and his team work and ask him a question or tell him some really cool news about what was going on, you know, in terms of our players and I can't do that now, you know. Or more than likely with me, because I forget, I'll ask a question, I'll go to Ian and he'll give me a very studious <laughs> answer and it's awesome. And then I'll be walking down the hall I'm like, oh, but you know what? I should have asked him this and I'll turn right around and I'll ask him like, you know, now it's like, well, I just hung up the Zoom call. Do I, do I really like, you know, call him back up again? And I'm sure, our, you know, our whole team sort of feels that way. And, I, you know, especially the new team members, you know, Holly <laughs> hadn't even been with us that long before. We're like, OK, you're now working from home. Don't worry about moving. <laughs> Yeah, sure. that must have been something else. All, all I know is from a player and as a fan and somebody who pays a lot of attention to this sort of stuff, to see you guys launch a full expansion and not only a big expansion, but one that was expected to break records given how many people were home and a, an opportunity to get back into WoW and have that happen with so little hitch. Like, I was shocked that day. I said, well, I'll be in queues all day or it won't be up or authentication servers will be down. I had all kinds of bad attitudes about what was going to happen. <laughs> And you guys nailed it. And I'm still not entirely sure how you pulled it off, given all the circumstances you just described. But I assume you and the team are pretty proud of, of how that would how that all went down. Amazing team, Scott. I mean, you know, I've been in the industry a lot of years, and, and this is truly the most professional team I've ever worked with. I mean, uh, you know, they, they love this game. We all came to the game because we were players and we loved it. And uh, they just plowed on, you know, especially our... our I mean, everyone on the team is awesome, uh, but I think especially, you know, in finishing things, you look at our live ops team, uh, you know, not only did they successfully get Shadows Lands out without a hitch, and, you know, we certainly had some hitches, you know, I, I certainly goofed by predicting the date a little bit ahead of time, but, um, you know, I think we did the right thing. We took the time to make the game right and, and really, you know, tune that in game. But the live ops team had to support not only that and, and the shifts that were going on there, but they went ahead and got Next Ramos out, you know, for us during that time, um, because we didn't want to let down the classic players just because Shadowlands was was running behind. Well, it's, it's a really impressive feat. Uh, speaking of impressive feats, uh, we've got a lot of people wondering what happened to the Archon, and uh, we have one in particular. Artherius asked, "What happened to Archon? Is she dead, or is she just wounded?" Uh, Steve, let's throw this one to you. 
Yeah, we uh, again when we're reviewing these these cinematics and talking about all the details, uh, we actually uh, I I talked about that with Taryn Gregory, our our director. I'm like, we should put some indication in there because we want to make it clear that she survives this. And so you see her hand kind of move. It's subtle, but it's there. But yeah, the the idea is um, she does survive this attack. And uh, when you come in to start playing uh, Chains of Domination when it goes live, you basically pick up the story in the aftermath of this attack. And as you can imagine, uh, once the Covenants all hear about it, that's going to put them into action. And uh, so that kind of drives the, the impetus of the story. And if you think about the implications of the Jailer sending someone to acquire the sigil from the Archon, uh, the natural question is, well, who else out there has a similar sigil for their covenant and are they a target as well so uh that's the story that's going to unfold uh it's super exciting uh, we're really uh looking forward to telling that story excellent uh ian i've got one for you here that turned out to be one of the most common questions that we received uh Ceresa from the eu guild worst company says do you plan to address the faction imbalance soon alliance guilds are really struggling right now and can use some help also what happened to cause this so this is something we, we talk about a tremendous amount. Um, we, we know there's a very real problem, in particular at the high end of the rating and Mythic Plus scene. Uh, this is something that has been a growing issue over the past, really, I would say, six to eight years. I think as to what caused the problem, it was a, 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 an imbalance in ra racials between the factions that was allowed to persist for a little bit too long. I think we saw over the years many top alliance guilds switch to horde particularly you know the mists of pandaria era a couple more in warlords a couple more in legion driven by you know or control racials that simmed better that just yielded higher dps outputs or had specific advantages on fights uh, at this point we don't think the racials are imbalanced in fact in castle nathria alliance I mean, not not even arguably i think had the all-around racial advantage but the thing that keeps people on one faction or makes them tempted to move is the social dynamics. It's the feeling that if you're a raider looking to join a top end guild, there are simply more options. And if your first choice doesn't work out, there's others to explore and fall back on. If you're looking to run high end mythic plus dungeons, there are more people looking to do that content there. And that's a challenging problem to solve because really, you know, it, we can't undo this movement that's happened over time. And it would take something tremendous to make people who had switched from Alliance to Horde want to suddenly switch back. We'd have to like massively buff Alliance racials or something to the point where they were so overpowered that it really felt like just bad. It just felt like it was game breaking and we were really telling people that they should play the other faction. Um, we've looked at you know where we can offer bonuses for the underrepresented faction where possible. But you know, fundamentally, this is a social issue that's likely to need a social solution. We don't have anything super short term that we can do about this, but it is a top priority for us. Personally, in the past, on stage at BlizzCon, you know, Alliance and Horde are, those are pillars of the Warcraft franchise. Those are pillars of what makes Warcraft Warcraft. And that's not something that we can just brush away. Um, but we have begun to ask ourselves where
We just started and already I am so happy. What a surprise, it's me. I am always blown away by what everyone has to offer. And there will be more Talent Spotlights throughout the program. But right now, we are going to get right into what you have all been waiting for, the cosplay. Our community does some of the best cosplay out there, and we are so excited to showcase it here for you. In the cosplay contest, the entrants were judged on originality, design, creativity, and execution. For our first cosplay category, no one does character armor and weapons better than Blizzard. And this year, we're uh, doing something a little different to introduce some of those contest finalists. We're shining a light on the community members from each of the six Blizzard franchises who are making a difference within their communities by bringing people together through gaming. To start us off, here is Vitor Ravenous Silvera. Hi there, my name is Vitor Silveira. I'm also known as Ravenous or Rev, and I'm from Brazil. For those who don't know, I am the creator of a project called EcoPoint Brazil. This project has been a lifesaver for me and for some members of the community. We've been able to connect in a whole different way. We've been doing like a lot of work for the environment. Uh, we've been planting, uh, doing reforesting, we've been cleaning. I want to thank everyone for helping me and allowing me to make this come true. Overwatch was a life changer for me. I love the universe, I love the characters, they are amazing. I love the soundtrack, I love uh, the gameplay, I love how the game works and the lore. The lore was that allowed me to create the project Eco Point, so that changed my life forever. And now, here are the finalists and winner for this year's cosplay and weapons and armor category.
到九年，有些害羞，可卡的御风暴，只剩我一人撑到最后。有人问美妈，你要御寒吗？浑身肉肉，抱歉，南极太冷，我只能穿的这么厚。我是美，深度科研宅，专注极限研究，身边只有一个我的小助手。他在雪球带我醒来的时候，世界已现在就我带上数据出发，决定拯救整个星球。我是美，闲来无事喜欢吟诗一首，平时很谦逊不上手，只是动作不让走。都说我是战场万金油，人间跪地求，我只想控制住坏人，再请出我的队友。我是。美，其实我内心里也很温柔，翘起兰花指转起枪来，显得很有 feel。你要不服，我就用拳拳砸你胸口。哇，除了科研，原来我这么适合战斗。嗯、我是美，手里的吹风机能喷射冷气，如果遇到低袭，我会收起冰墙防御，能保护，能突袭。我不怕一 v 一，随身带护甲，残血就把自己关在冰箱里。开玩笑，我有全场数，也是我的控制能力。舒心一袭是暴雪爸爸亲闺女。我是平时里不要对身材太过在意，你们管这个叫坦，而我叫 sex。坏人太多，太疯狂，毫无章法的保障。减速呢，也是一种情绪稳定的方法。有人说我长得像熊猫，是不是讨打？冻住你好，抱头三件套，送你回家。都循循温斯顿的处事风格，绝对冷静。我最讨厌那些坏蛋肆意破坏环境。只要我有恒心，守望先锋，团结一心，终有一天，霸占西平世界，重回安宁收。Another amazing spotlight, and congratulations to all the finalists of the weapons and armor cosplay category. The winner on Hira Cosplay is now qualified for the Best in Show Cosplay Award at the end of the program. Moving on, storytelling is what really captures our attention and keeps bringing us back to the worlds and the realms of Blizzard and this community. You guys, you're so great because you take those stories and you make them your own. So now. Let's take a look at the third place finalist for digital storytelling. It's over, Sylvanas. Stop this bloodshed. Jane, if Sylvanas responds with terms that are acceptable to me, peace is upon us. No one is better suited to discuss the matter further. I trust in it again, Greymane. There you are, Alliance dog. The Horde is now at open war with the Alliance. Has Stormwind finally come out to play? I have no time for games. Not while I reign. This war will not end until we stand victorious. Such a feeble mind. No. Do not keep me waiting. You have no idea what you're up against. My victory was inevitable. The Forsaken will never stop fighting. Ah, oh, fool! I don't do bouncy. Enough of your insolence. Look up and around you. This is war. Time is a luxury we do not possess. Nathanos. Give me a moment. Interesting. Few truly have the stomach for war. You, it seems, have a genuine taste for it. I require the services of one whom I can trust. Want to witness true power? For you. This will be a convenient partnership. I will have need of you.
for the Horde. Wow. Well, I'm embarrassed. And Q1342, go. Lee, camera four, I want a slow pan in on the host, a DePaul mover number seven. No, Lee, that's a DePaul move number six. Are we not paying attention? Slowly, slow, slowly, Lee, slowly, Lee. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, let's go to camera three. Eh, that's not working. Hi. Since no one's here, I thought I'd take Someone a Someone told Darren there's no show. camera there. I've gone mad with power. <laughs> now, we're gonna move right along to the next cosplay category, Blizzard character. Let's get to know Scott Levy, AKA Bites, as he helps introduce the finalists. Okay, Lee, let's go. Q number one, back to one. Nobody tell Darren. Brilliant! Lee, this is great! Keep going, keep going, keep going! You went too far, Lee. Oh, God. Hey, I'm Scott Levy, also known as Hearthstone Innkeeper Bites, and I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. Over the years, I've, I've gotten a reputation of hosting over-the-top events. Uh, and for me, Fireside Gatherings kind of became a creative outlet. As someone who gets a lot of joy from hosting live events, uh, it's been an especially difficult year. It hasn't stopped me, though, from connecting with my Hearthstone family. Uh, if anything, being restricted to online events has helped push me to create some unique tournaments like the Battle Blitz and Battle Grind. Uh, I've gotten to the point now where I've been able to mentor other innkeepers and provide them with tools and resources and training to help make their events better. I've run some charity events and created resources online for everyone to use, and, and giving back to the community really means a lot to me. One of the things that I miss the most, of course, is BlizzCon. I miss all the people and the live tournaments and the spectacle of it all. And I even miss the two and a half hours it takes of glue and makeup and paint to transform me into the innkeeper. And as much work as it is to transform me into this guy, I know so many people put so much more work into their cosplay. So I am thrilled that this year we get to see some more amazing cosplay. And now here are the finalists and winner of this year's cosplay Blizzard Characters category.
congratulations to Hardigan for winning the Cosplay Award for Best Blizzard Character. Stick around at the end of the showcase to see if they take home the coveted Best in Show Cosplay Award. It's coming up at the end of the showcase. But right now, we have the second place digital storytelling piece. And my friends, it is a musical delight. Let's see it now. Music! I saw an old man in a dinghy by the sea. He said he was in a quarantine. I thought he'd gone mad from the scurvy when he pulled out his thunder fury and said, six feet apart or six feet down, stand next to me and I'll put ye underground. Don't hide ye hell nor take your mask off. there will be plague in Nazareth. So I dock me ship off the wetland shore The town seemed quieter than before No folk in sight but food at their doors Delivered by goblin eats No horde or ally in BGs Instead they fight through Zoomy teams Everyone's social distancing Like that old man said to me Six feet apart or six feet down Stand next to me and I'll put ye underground Don't hide ye hell nor take your mask off There be plague in Azeroth I seek to find the source of the plague That drove all of our heroes away I start me search in Booty Bay The foulest place there be Goblins point to Zulgarub. I ask Hakkar, corrupted blood? He said, no way, try Kel'Thuzad. A 20 minute flight northeast. Uh, excuse me. Can, can you move, can you move back please? Six feet apart or six feet down. Stand next to me and I'll put ye underground. Don't hide ye hell nor take your mask off. There be plague in Azeroth. I arrive at Nax and find KT. He said this plague is beyond me. There's no place with toxicity to brew a plague like that. But Storm when trade chat. <sighs> Can you please move your griffin back? I spot that old man from the dinghy. He's yelling at trade. Thunder Fury! Everybody has one in the city, and they're all so scarab lords. Fully miss and bored. I said six <laughs> It appears that jerks be the source of the plague, bragging about their loot in trade. It annoyed all the casual folk away. Now no one wants to play. But there's still some hope to save the city. The cure be show generosity. All part of one community that spans 30 years. So spread love to your peers because Blizzard is here. All cosplay takes imagination, artistry, creativity, ingenuity. But for our category of traditional creation, we want to award those who displayed the highest levels of craftsmanship through cutting, sewing, fastening, and use of classic materials. So, to announce the finalists in traditional creation cosplay, we have Diablo 3 content creator, Wolf Crier. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, my name is James McDermott, but online, I am better known as Wolf Crier a Diablo 3 streamer and content creator. I'm also the founder of Level With A Cause, which is a charity fundraising event that coincides with the start of each new season in Diablo 3. We've been doing this since season 11, and thanks to a ton of my fellow content creators and the generosity of the Diablo 3 community, this effort has managed to raise over $80,000 for various charities over the last few years. 2020 brought many challenges to our daily lives, but gaming, and in particular for me, Diablo 3 and its fantastic community, brought me at least some sense of that normalcy that I think we were all trying to find last year. 
Some of my best memories that I have have come from BlizzCon. These are truly moments that I can never, ever forget. And I personally can't wait until we all have that opportunity to meet up in person once again. But now, here are the finalists and winners for this year's Cosplay Traditional Creation category. And now, it is time to give out the first place award for digital storytelling. And for this piece, a group of Overwatch community members came together from around the globe to create something truly fantastic. Let me tell you, my friends, they delivered the payload. Let's take a look. Oh, better get my coffee. All right, good to go. And right on time. Reinhardt, how are you? Uh, good, I suppose. But I'm still not sure about this internet meeting. Oh, you'll get used to it, big guy. Now, can you screen share our plan of attack on Sector 7? What share? Share what? What are you speaking of? Hold that thought. Brigitte's in the waiting room. Where? What room? Where's my beloved goddaughter? I do not see her. Brigitte, how are you? Oh! Ah! 
What is that? That's just Mitty. She hasn't had her liner yet. What's a liner? Halfway between lunch and dinner. She gets cranky if she doesn't get it on time. No, Mitty, no. Behave. Okay, well, anyway, here's Genji. Uh, Genji, we can't hear you. Genji, you're muted. Turn off mute. There you go. So, what were you saying? I need healing. Of course. Genji, we need you to focus, alright? Well, that just happened. Okay, uh, moving on. May's here. Hi, May. Oh, May, stop. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I was just making a milkshake. It's a little warm where I am. Don't you live in the Arctic? Yes, and it's summer in here. Okay. Nina, I did some research on the internet machines. I can screen share. That's wonderful. Now I can finally get something done. Uh, oh no, uh, we're losing connection. What is happening? I wish to screen share. I, I wish to show my skills. I live for this. Hello? 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 Ah, ah bugger. Over the years, techniques for creating costumes have evolved with current technology, which has made for grander and grander cosplay. So right now, we are going to award those who have utilized crafting technology to its fullest to bring forth the most epic of modern creation cosplay. To help us introduce the finalist, we have StarCraft streamer, Livy B. Hi, my name's Olivia Cito, but most people know me by my gamer tag Libby B. I'm a streamer and cosplayer from Sydney, Australia, and I've been playing Blizzard games since I was 10 years old, so they hold a special place in my heart. StarCraft is the hardest game I have ever played, and getting Grandmaster for the first time was easily one of the best moments of my life. I was finally able to break through that skill ceiling, a goal I was driven to achieve for years and something I definitely wouldn't have been able to achieve if not for the love and support of my community. Streaming has really allowed for myself and others to stay connected during the pandemic. And even if you are someone that isn't used to staying inside all the time, there's always a place for you to hang out with people who share the same passion for gaming as you do. Shout out to the Beehive. For this past year or so, I've also been incredibly passionate about cosplay. My favourite character to cosplay, of course, is D.Va. She is definitely my video game character kindred spirit. But that's enough about me. Here are the finalists and winners for this year's cosplay modern creation category.
There's more show to come. But before we continue, we'd like to take a moment to recognize one of our community members who passed away earlier this year. Jared Nanden took the BlizzCon stage in 2013 in an unforgettable South Park World of Warcraft cosplay. Creativity is the defining trait of what we try to put on display during community night. And Jared, Jared was one of the most creative ones to ever walk the BlizzCon stage. Our cosplay community deeply feels this loss. Jared Lee Nandin, how do you kill that which has no life? Do, 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 do. Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. I'm just alone in an empty theater creating this, a masterpiece. Ah, <laughs> yes, and paintbrush down. <laughs> Seriously, the Blizzard community creates some of the most impressive fan art out there. And a big thank you to all those who submitted their fantastic work. Look, I was a little late on submitting mine, so unfortunately, I could not be considered to enter the contest, but I will let all of you give me your opinion. You be the judge. It's really good, right? I'm a very fragile individual. But come on, let's see who the winners of this year's art contest are. And friends, to announce the finalists, we have Jazzeline from the Heroes of the Storm community. Ha ha! Hi guys, my name is Brooke. 
but most of you know me as Jazeline. I'm from Trenton, Ontario, Canada, but I've called California home now for over four years. I stream and I cast Heroes of the Storm, but I'm also the creator and organizer of Girls Gang Squad, an all-female community created to highlight and support women in gaming. In 2020 alone, Girls Gang Squad was able to raise over $10,500 for charities such as Rain, the Breast Cancer Research Foundation, and Marine Toys for Tots. One of my favorite things about Heroes of the Storm is the community. I've never been surrounded by such generous and compassionate people. They're what make the events Girls Gang Squad put on so successful. But enough of that stuff. Every year at BlizzCon, I'm absolutely blown away by the talented artists that submit work for the art contest. Here are the finalists and winner of this year's art contest. Congratulations to Zong Yong for winning the art contest with that amazing villainous piece. Well, look, I thought I was going to introduce our special guest right now, but there seems to be a bit of a hiccup. But look, I am from theater, and uh, uh, the show must go on. Sorry. So Sorry, I had to finish putting all this on. Guns will be stuck there. No, I got it, I got it. Okay, okay, you hey. look great. Huh. This is amazing. Thank you, thank you. One question, why are you dressed as McCree? You, you, you asked me to 
come and cosplay for the community showcase. <laughs> no, it was about introducing cosplay. It's okay, it's fine. You look fantastic. Well, thank you, much obliged. <laughs> Figured it was either this or the pajamas I've been wearing for the past 10 months, and I think this has a little bit of an air of professionalism over the previous, so. I've been wearing a suit all the time. That's the epitome of professional, so there you go. <laughs> well, thank you. Speaking of that, professionalism, mm -hmm. would you help me bring the hammer down by introducing the next segment? It would be an honor if you don't mind. <laughs> so, the Blizzard community, as we know, does cosplay better than anyone. So, we'd like to thank you for the time spent on bringing Blizzard characters to life in incredible ways. So let's take a look at some of our entrants in this year's cosplay exhibition. We're back. Why are you taking off your costume? I told you, I've been wearing nothing but pajamas for about a year. This is getting hot. <laughs> <sighs> However, I do want to say a huge thank you to all the amazing entrants to our exhibition, incredible costumes, and easily one of my favorite parts of every year here at BlizzCon. And now, my friends, it is time. The award for this year's cosplay best in show will go to one of the four cosplay category winners and help us present the award all the way from France. Here is Zerato. Salut à tous, je m'appelle Adrien, mais je suis connu sur Internet sous le nom de Zerator et je viens de France. 
Cette année a été très particulière pour moi puisque j'ai beaucoup streamé à cause du Covid et évidemment de tout ce qui en est ressorti par rapport à l'urgence sanitaire. Il s'est passé quelque chose de très particulier pour moi puisque j'ai organisé un raid pour la première fois de ma vie dans un hôtel avec 20 joueurs. Wow, c'est vraiment mon jeu de cœur, j'adore y jouer et on s'est retrouvé voilà, pendant deux semaines malgré l'urgence sanitaire mais en respectant les mesures et les gestes barrières dans un hôtel à 20 pour les deux semaines de raid mythique au château de Natria qui est juste derrière moi d'ailleurs. C'était un vrai bonheur pour nous, c'était un petit peu tout le rêve de joueurs de MMO de se retrouver avec les 20 de la guilde directement dans un hôtel pendant deux semaines pour jouer comme des malades et on a réussi à un petit peu avancer dans le raid même si on n'est pas des pros mais on a fait de notre mieux et c'était déjà pas mal. World of Warcraft pour moi c'est une très vieille histoire, déjà dans les années 2000-2013 j'organisais des concours de pexing sur, euh, sur le jeu et il y avait déjà pas mal de gens pour suivre et aujourd'hui presque 10-15 ans plus tard il y a encore autant de monde qui suit tout ça donc je suis vraiment très content. Aujourd'hui je suis très fier de représenter la France et toute l'Europe à travers World of Warcraft mon stream et cette vidéo grâce à la confiance que m'a accordé Blizzard. And now, selected from the finalists of the four cosplay categories, here is the winner for this year's best in show. And that's it for our BlizzCon line community showcase. Congratulations to Hardigan for winning the cosplay best in show contest. Hardigan! Hardigan! <laughs> well done. And thank you, Matt, for joining me. Every year, every time that I get to spend with you is more special than I can possibly say. Oh, make me blush. It's truly the honor's mine. I've been coming to BlizzCon since it started, and being able to share this space with you is always an absolute joy. Thank you. And congratulations to all our finalists. And thank you to all the community members who participated in our showcase. And finally, thanks to all you watching at home. Look, friends, even though we're still staying safe by playing a part together, hopefully if we're lucky, we'll see you sooner than later at our next BlizzCon. Until then, I'm Darren. And I'm Matt. Stay safe. We love you! <laughs> <laughs>
Hi, I'm Mika. Um, I'm gonna be playing a wizard, and I'm super excited to kill a lot of things because that's what Diablo's about, right? That's what Diablo's about. That's kind of what Diablo's about. You Sweet. got this. You got this. Awesome. awesome. I got this. Yeah. <laughs> Laura Bailey. That and looting because that's what I'm here for. I <laughs> am Laura Bailey, and I'm playing a druid today. Brilliant. <laughs> Liam O'Brien. Hello, I'm uh, Liam O'Brien, and I'm going to be the crusader for the group, and I'm excited to be the tank in a D&D game for the first time ever. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos Luna. Hey, uh, I'm Carlos Luna. I'm going to be playing uh, a necromancer with uh, a little demon worm in his brain. So, yeah. <laughs> Like you do. Perfect. Like, like you do. Yeah. <laughs> and Marisha. And I am Marisha Ray, and I will be playing a demon hunter, not voiced by Laura Bailey, even though she's at this table. <laughs> pew pew. <laughs> Meta those my, awkwardness. Those are my crossbows. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the sound they make? Pew yeah. pew. I love it. Perfect. Maybe we could find one moment in the game though where you could throw your voice and you could just sort of ADR. Yeah. Can you? Oh, just, like, sure. Oh, sure. Live, yeah, live yeah, yeah, ADR. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> watermelon. Watermelon. Yeah, ooh, that's good, Marisha. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no more of that. Uh, <laughs> Squash that immediately. Exactly. If you want to watch this uh, campaign again or check out any of the other amazing free content uh, as part of this BlizzCon line event, uh, visit blizzcon.com. And tonight's adventure that you'll see here shortly uh, will be available on our Critical YouTube channel soon enough. Uh, thanks to Blizzard and BlizzCon for bringing us to be a part of the celebration and to make this game possible as part of the event. I think uh, I think that's it. So that all being said, let's go ahead and jump into the special one shot for BlizzCon Line, Diablo. <laughs> In the world of sanctuary, darkness carries far. The mortal realm between the high heavens and the burning hells, life in these lands is ever a struggle, caught in the middle of this eternal conflict. The hearts of men fall easily to corruption, and the ancient evil ever seeks to spill into this world to sow chaos and blanket the realm in fire and shadow. In a time of shallow peace, you've each set out to make your fortunes in the world, whether to combat the evil that lurks in every lightless space, or to seek the answers to the countless forgotten mysteries that call out to the curious. You've come together in finding common purpose against the plague of evils, and made a name for yourselves in the region of Westmarch. Here, you found yourself summoned by her Herodric scholar, called Deckard Cain. Under the dim call of candlelight, Deckard asked for your aid. Hello, my friends. <laughs> I have heard of your great deeds already and find myself in need of others in such skills as yours. The home of my youth, the humble village of Tristram, fell to flame and evil years ago. Abandoned, the ruins of Tristram have since been nothing but ash and memories, often targeted by looters and grave robbers. However, rumors swirl of something dark and violent stirring beneath the cathedral, and 
Given the history of that place, I foreboding worry of what might be lingering there. I would ask you five to journey to the ruins of Tristram, seek the source of these rumors, and cleanse the cathedral of what terrors might reside below. I'd like to put the souls of those lost finally to rest. After braving days of freezing wind <laughs> and the persistent rain that still haunts you. 10 out of 10. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Michael Goff. You finally reach the edge of the surrounding hills, looking down to the ghastly echo of the village once known as Tristram. Walking through the mud and charred foundations of what you imagine was once a modest township, you can't help but imagine what horrors must have fallen upon the denizens. Slowly, your eyes fall upon the partially crumbled stone structure to the north, the cathedral. You grasp at your weapons tightly as you enter the semi-fallen structure, finding solace within here from the rain. Stepping across the stone floor, your vision skips from broken window to fallen candelabra, until you find the staircase descending to the depths below. A shine catches your eye, seeing a single gold coin resting atop the first stair. As you descend these steps into the first layer of the crypt below, what do they see as the demon hunter sets in? Two heavy footsteps step in. And you see a big skull, a cow skull first, and has detail of gold filigree emblazoning it, with the general calf skull motif on the rest of her armor, with a little flex of gold, and two crossbows. This is Toro, the demon hunter, returning home to her hometown of Tristram but she hasn't been here since she was a little girl, growing up on her cattle farm. And she is most definitely no longer recognizable to anyone who might know her. Fair enough. Alrighty. Laszlo, come on, get in here. Um, yeah, of, co of course, of course. Um, and you see Laszlo uh, step in, he's a young man, uh, his Forearms are missing flesh and skin. It's just bone that you can see, and it's surrounded by uh, this purple uh, glow around it. Same thing with his uh, left calf as well. Mm. Uh, he has two uh, scythes, and they look like barber blades, like shaving blades. Mm. Uh, that's how they're shaped, like almost like L shapes. And he's very wide eye, but at the same time, you would notice that his body language and his eyes kind of change sometimes, and he starts hunching hmm. and smirking, <laughs> and then back to wide eye again. Oh yes, right, right away, yeah, okay. All right. As you tumble down the stairway to follow the Demon Hunter companion, Mordred, if you don't mind. Shining in the darkness is Mordred the Gaunt. <laughs> <laughs> Not a hair on my head, Bald and pale and dark of eye, sallow-cheeked, in golden armor of latticework shining with my Zakara, a word I looked up on Wikipedia earlier today. <laughs> I carry a, um, a morning star and a tall, slender shield, and I look with a lean and hungry gaze wanting to eliminate corruption. Stay close. As Mordred steps into the central landing chamber, if you wouldn't mind. Well, before you ever see Remuel, you hear the swarm of insects that follows her, a buzzing that enters the room before she does. She steps in, hair over one eye, a bit of a mess. Green and black armor. It's more like vines and 
reptile skin. Two snakes encircle her arms. They look around, her fingernails very long. She seems happy to be here. <laughs> and following in, the final member of this troop. At first, Indra walks in and she fixes her hair as it's been messy on the, on the ride in. She immediately goes to the gold and picks it up off the floor and scoffs at everyone who didn't realize there was treasure lying there. <laughs> and you see these beautiful raven feathers encircling her neck, kind of like a collar. Very beautiful cleavage on display <laughs> <laughs> in, in a tiny raven feathered uh, bra top. I also on Wikipedia saw that this is the wizard couture. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just kind of one swath of blue fabric going across, kind of making this very skimpy dress. Um, interestingly, her right arm is completely burned up to her forearm and she has uh, some gold fingernails, probably smelted from all of her loot. And she has a large staff that swirls with dark magic at the end of it. Um, she says nothing, but she pockets the gold into her cleavage. You got it. <clears throat> As you all finally descend the last bit of stairs, you finally land in the, the crypt entryway chambers. You can see immediately in the torchlight that you have carrying into this lightless space, glistening sparkles, other smattering of scattered gold coins, maybe a dozen or so, that kind of spill out in the middle of the old, dusty stonework that greets you here. The smell of decay and old, musty, stale air catches your nose. You can see alcove displays nearby in the sides of the stone walls and the low ceiling. Uh, statues, angelic statues, sit within these little alcoves, though in various states of disrepair, while numerous puddles of wax form at the corners of various elements of decor, where candles once lit these chambers before they burn down to nothing. A faint growl echoes in the shadow beyond your sight. As you all continue on a bit, keeping your eyes peeled, the pathway splits into three directions, a T intersection, so early in this crypt. Any indication of which direction the growl was coming from? Make a perception check. Are there any clay pots around? Make a perception check. <laughs> 17. 17. Uh, very good, actually. The growl, while the echoes seem to be somewhat amorphous at the distance, you listen closely and can hear a faint bit of like grinding and another low guttural rumble, similar to that initial growl from the path directly ahead. You roll day? 13. 13. Uh, yeah, there's a pot right to the left of you. <laughs> <laughs> it smashes and breaks to the ground, leaving four gold pieces, because yes. why wouldn't there be gold in a pot in a crypt? <laughs> Diablo. <laughs> All right. Well, it seems as if trouble might be awaiting us ahead. Do we want to start there, or pick one of the sides? Straight ahead, I say. We're here to eradicate the darkness. No point in wasting time, let's go. Bag of bones, so scared on the inside. Bag of bones does not want to go. Onyx does. And he scurries off. That creeps me out every time. Every time. <laughs> Laszlo is in a mood today. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> moving forward, as Laszlo, you are taking point on this one. Um, creeping forward, you initially step through the stone arches, and you can see they're deep set with cracks all around you. Uh, the crunch of shale and bone breaks beneath your boot falls as you step it loud in your ears amongst the still silence that surrounds you. The hall carries on for quite a bit forward, but the walls begin to narrow ever so slightly before finally coming to an end, where you can subtly see with the torchlight as it approaches behind you, it looks like a pile of corpses lie on the ground. Human at one part, but even just at a quick glance, you can see they're bloody and torn apart. Um, 
you guys would notice at the back of Laszlo has kind of changed from like hunched over to like up straight and like darting his head like left and right. Um, there are, um, ooh, there are corpses. Yeah. Everywhere. We're in a cathedral, yeah. It's a tomb down here. Are you surprised by the fact that people are, we knew people were dead down here. Well, I, I know that. I just meant, yay for us, we picked the right way, okay? Yeah. You're not wrong. How fresh do the bodies look? Uh, if you make a medicine check to go and inspect. Do I have medicine? Hmm. Should be a skill there. Doesn't mean you have you're good at it necessarily. But... There's no medicine. Yeah, there's no there's medicine. survival. Oh, sorry. Uh, medicine. Oh. Oh, I did remove that one. Nature then. Nature. Sorry, my bad. Oh, that's not good. Which is weird. <laughs> but <laughs> seeing as how I grew up in a swamp and all. Seventeen. Seventeen. Not too bad. Inspecting the bodies as you kind of lean down and look across the corpses, um, they. The blood is congealed. They've been dead for a little bit of time, um, and some look fresh, some look old, almost like something keeps coming back to feed at times. Um, but some of them are very fresh, and you can see where the bone has been splintered and broken. There are gouges in the exposed elements of the the, uh, the, the heavier white bone that pe peeks out. Teeth marks, claw marks. An animal did this. I would know. That growl creeps back in, and you kind of hear in that glance up, and just as you catch the edge of the torchlight, the height of the building, your eyes now see lining the upper roof and ceiling of this chamber, a dozen or so of these gray-skinned humanoid beings with elongated limbs all just kind of hanging quietly, waiting as the torchlight glistens past their eyes, reflecting once. And in that brief moment of tension, as you hear that growl, <laughs> they all begin to leap down towards you. Anybody rolling it? Oh my god! <laughs> As it begins, you see swarming down ten of these ghoulish creatures begin to just surround and tear and gnash. Uh, three of them are going after you. Cool. Three of them are going to be swarming you, and then it's going to be. So we'll, we'll do yours first. So the three against you. It's a miss. Uh, it's a twelve hit. Miss, and that does hit. So two of them go streaking up towards you, claws towards you, uh, one of them holding a giant hooked, rusted blade, swings it wide and cuts into you for three points of physical damage. Um, so the three on you, not much of an effect. The three that are swarming you, Laszlo, uh, that's going to be a 10, which I believe misses. 18, which does hit. That hits. And uh, I, 21. Yeah. So as you're backing away, you start seeing yourself swarming as these creatures rush towards you, their jaws open with horrible spiked teeth, Almost like thick greenish phlegm like liquid pouring out of the inside of it as they run towards you, claws out. As they slash you, take six points of physical damage from two of them, managed to break through your defense. <laughs> Our hit points are not very high. Two end up swarming towards oh, you, Toro. Uh, 21. Hits. And an 11. Miss. All right. As they both come kind of swarming up towards you, one jumps up and you manage to catch it with the side of your forearms and shove it off of you, but at that point, another one crawls up and ends up biting into the side of your shoulder and clavicle area. You take three points of physical damage, uh, and the last two would be against one against each of you. Uh, that is a 24 versus Mordred, it's... and a nine versus Indra. Doesn't hit. All right, so you take three points of physical damage, Mordred, as one of them jumps up onto your shield and claws over and just catches the side of your forehead there. You can feel the blood begin to run down into your eye. <sighs> Top of the round now, Indra, you're up first. Um, I'm going to electrocute. You said there are three over here on on Remy. There are three on Remy. Yes. Okay, I'm going to try and electrocute one of them and two other next to it. You've got it. Uh, All right. Yeah, yeah. Which is a DC of 16. Gotcha. So as you reach out with your staff in one hand, you see this energy begin to charge up into your arm, and then suddenly rocket out towards the one and spread off and forks into the other two that are right next to you, Remy. You watch as the electricity charges through their body. Uh, that is, what's the DC on that? It's 16? 16, dexterity. That's a fail, a fail, and a success. Darn. So go ahead and roll damage on those. All right. Uh, that's 11. So... All right. Yeah. All righty. So, as it shocks through them all, 
and they shrink back and scream. Two of them look extremely hurt, but they're still holding on and they're hungry, and they're just running on starved, starved instinct at this point. Uh, none of them fall, but they are looking pretty damaged. Do uh, you gonna stay put towards the back? Uh, as a bonus action, I'm gonna teleport a little bit further, just kind of out of any physical it. range. All right, so you just you watch as uh, as Indra suddenly vanishes from sight, and uh, you hear a footfalls in the darkness behind you by about 20, 30 or so feet. All right, finishing your go, Indra. That brings us to Laszlo, Tor, and you're on deck. Great. Uh, one of there's two in front of me now. There's uh, two on me. There, there's three on you. Three on me. Gotcha. Uh, I want to grab one uh, by the head and cast uh, Siphon Blood. Okay. Cool. All righty. Okay. Let's go ahead and roll attack on that one. And that is a 12. 12 just hits. Ooh. So as you reach out and grab it and pull it in, now with the light there, you can see its eyes. It's kind of like odd, milky, white, greenish tint to it. What's the, what's the damage on that one? Uh, nine. Nine damage? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sorry. As you pull out of it, you watch as it screams and squeals and you pull the life force, whatever element of life force still remains in this odd, twisted abomination. Um, it damages it heavily, but it's still standing and wriggling in your grasp. You do heal 1d4 damage from that, though. Uh, three. Okay. And don't forget to mark your essence you get from that one. Cool. Uh, do you want to stay put or do you wish to move back? Uh, as a bonus action, I'd like to cast Devour. You, uh, devour would, would require the corpses nearby. Oh, aren't there corpses? Oh, oh, no, there are? Actually, yes, yeah, there are. like a bunch of corpses. You can totally do that, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I was like, they're not dead. The other people are. <laughs> yeah, you can. Uh, how many are fresh within five, 30 feet? Five fresh corpses in the sense that their essence has not been taken. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> What a cheerful necromancer. Yeah. <laughs> nom nom nom. Mm, <laughs> like boxes. Fresh baked bread. Uh, great. So there you go. So you go ahead and get your uh, your essence from that one. Yep. And you're staying put? Um Will they get a attack of opportunity if I They would. They would. Uh, uh yeah, I'll stay put. Okay, you got it. <laughs> got it. All right, cool. That finishes last turn. Tori up, more did you're on deck. Okay, I am gonna try to shuffle this one that's on me. Uh, uh, off a bit, and I'm going to pull out one of my crossbows and go doof, doof, hungering arrow twice into the side of its head. You got it. Pew pew. Ooh. Uh, first one is a natural three, which I don't think hits with an 11. Uh, it just misses, unfortunately. It's too just close to you, and it's writhing in your grasp and sh goes wide. Mm, but the no other one is a natural 19 for 27. That definitely hits. Uh, which is 1d6. Okay, plus eight damage. Nice. So that one also, it goes right in the head and part of the head kind of breaks off and you can see the open wound there. It's heavily hurt, but it's still holding on. Okay. Angry and hungry. Um, staying put? Um, yes. All right, that finishes your go. Morge, you're up. Remy, you're on deck. Roughly how many of these are there total? Uh, you're all, they're all pretty clustered right now. Yeah. Since you guys were all in the same area, there are 10 of them uh, currently in the middle of this battle. All of them are within 15 or so feet of you. And there's one on me. There's one on you. Yes. I'm going to back away from it intentionally, risking an attack and provoke all of them. Okay, so it takes one swing at you. <laughs> for uh, 20, so you take three points of physical damage, mm. but you manage to pull away and you're going to provoke, you said. All 10 of them need to beat a DC 14 wisdom save. And for every failure, I rack up wrath. Indeed, all right. Uh, what's the DC? 14. 14. First one is a success. Boo. Fail. 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 So wait, did you just... Success. You Fail. You just like lured them all onto him? Yeah. Fail. That's cool. That's a good tank. Yeah. Fail. So two succeeded. So it's eight that... Eight total. Eight that failed. So I'm Ooh. going to back up uh, and stop uh, five feet in front of Indra, drawing them toward me. They have to attack me, and I now have uh, full wrath. There you go. So, uh, d d describe how that looks to the troop here. Oh, I just back them and say, come, lost ones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, lost ones, yeah. Mm, perfect. Make your peace quickly. <laughs> and uh, the armor just starts to glow through the lattice work as they start to 
as he backs away towards uh You've got it. Mageling nerd. Awesome. <laughs> so you watch all these creatures, even the ones that are up in your faces all of a sudden turn, except for like a couple of them, turn over towards Mordred, begin to make their movement. Uh, when is their next go? Remy, you're up. Um. Okay. Number one, the swarm of insects starts to get louder and louder. And for my bonus action, I'm going to have my swarm of insects a swarm, the <laughs> the one that attacked me, the one that actually got the hit in. You got it. All righty. Uh, there it is. Go ahead and roll for the attack on that. Uh, 20. 20 definitely hits. All right. So that does a uh, big do. 2d4. 5, seven points of damage to the little oh. And then um, I would like to hold my action, my attack, until the creatures move towards. You've got it. All right. Although, actually, I'm going to keep that in mind of that. Because you start with zero spirit, you have to build it up, and that does cost spirit. Oh, you start with zero. Start with zero. Yeah, you got to build it up. Good to know. That's all good. <laughs> I understand now. In that case, screw it. I'm gonna maul the one in front of me too. <laughs> All right, you got that. Okay, so I instantly, poof, I'm turned into a, a giant were crocodile, <laughs> reptilian, very large, <laughs> very large no. mouth. You got it. All right. So using your action to maul the one that's in front of you. Yeah. Go ahead and roll an attack on that one. Well, he used the same attack since you already rolled for that one. Okay. Um, so we'll carry that over. Go ahead and roll damage for the maul against Hell the one yeah. that's in front of you. Seven. Seven damage is still enough. So as you swoop out, you watch as this giant crocodile face suddenly sprouts from the front of Remy uh, and slams down onto one of these creatures. It's screams from the inside, muffled once it's enclosed in the mouth, and as the jaw tightens, it goes limp, nice. spitting it onto the ground. Nice. Cool, so you are currently transformed, which means you do get your bonus to AC while you're shapeshifted. Oh, sweet. All right. Um, that did generate spirit, so now you could also swarm, now that you have that to use, if you wanted to. Well, there you go. I'll do that <laughs> too, then. Uh, so I'll roll for attack on that one. You got it. That definitely hits. That's a 21. All right, roll damage for the swarm now. <laughs> 10. 10, yeah, that'll do it. So after that one falls limp, you pull back, angry in your gator form. Uh, you watch as the insects swarm around one of the second ones that was still kind of recoiling from the shock that was delivered by Indra at the beginning of this combat round. And as the insects swarm around it, it begins to screech loudly. <laughs> before the silence hits, the insects pull away and you see mostly skeletal upper torso as it falls to its knees and pfft, splats on the ground, dead. All right. Nice. Uh, you finishing your round there? Yeah. All right, Laszlo, you're up. Throw your deck. Okay. Actually, you know what? Actually, sorry, the creatures have to go first. Yeah. How bad. <laughs> so the swarm that's there, th two, two of them have fallen. <laughs> There's still one against you. Remy, that's going to be a, an 11 to hit, which misses, goes against you. Three still up against you. But this one actually is now going to, uh, the three against you are going to go after you. So they begin to rush away um, in your direction. Um, let's see there. That's a 24, rolled a national 19. Do you get an attack, an, op an attack of opportunity against the ones that run away oh, from you? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So you can just take yeah. a, a, a singular strike against one of them if you want to with your Siphon Blood. Okay, yeah, uh, let's do that. Blim, blim, blim. Uh, 14. 14 does hit. Go ahead and roll damage on that. Cool. 13. 13, all right. The one that's rushing away from you, which would have been the one that first attacked him, so that one's nullified, uh, yeah. tries to scoop away, and as it does, you manage to slam it with your Siphon Blood and as you do, you pull the last bit of its undead life force out and it crumples to the ground and kind of withers in the spot like a spider curling its legs in. No. Um, so that first attack does not actually come at you. Hey. Um, <laughs> That's so, my necromancer. <laughs> <laughs> so one, your local necromancer. one miss <laughs> and a second miss. They both come at you uh, rolling terribly. <gasps> uh, the other two that are were coming at you, 
Uh, one of them stays. Okay. Uh, so the other one that, that succeeded. So that one's going to be against you. That is going to be a, an 11 to hit. Miss. Misses. The other one runs towards you. You do get an attack, although you are ranged at this point. So I will say that you don't necessarily have that. Okay. Um, that is a 12 against you. <laughs> All right. And then there's the two that were already on you. 12 and 14. No. Does not hit. And the last one that's against you rushes past and heads over towards you as well. That's going to be a 12. They're rolling real bad. Back to the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> so now there is a, a mighty swarm of these surviving ghouls that are all just kind of scrambling over and around uh, the, the, the proximity of Mordred, who's just like pushing back with the shield flail, kind of spinning in the air angrily, getting amped up. Um, that finishes their go. Now we're back to Indra, and then it's Laszlo. Uh, I'm going to just electrocute kind of in the middle. Just if they're all kind of piling around him, just trying to hit three again. Sure, you can do that, yeah. yeah. Go ahead and roll for an attack. All right. Oh, wait, no, it's a DC 16. Oh, that's right, because it's not a roll attack roll. Yeah. That's a success. Success, wow, they're rolling high. And a fail. All right. Let's go roll damage on that. 10. 10 damage, all right, so that's five. Still takes out one of them who was previously damaged by the electrocute before. Nope. And then the other two take half damage, so the energy sparks off, and the other two that it hits after the first one pops from the the pulse of electrical energy, the other two get shaken by it, but still continue to focus their attention angrily on uh, Mordred, though some of them are starting to lose their luster, fighting against this this iron wall of a person. Um, all right, uh, anything else you want to do from your side? Uh, yeah, since Mordred brought all of them to me, I'm going to teleport again on the other side. <laughs> Okay, go for it. <laughs> so I'm gonna use the bonus action to. Thanks a lot, Mordred. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Indra's just playing teleporting <laughs> chess piece over there. Yeah. Um, finishing your turn, Laszlo, you're up. Throw your own deck. Okay. As soon as uh, the other guy uh, hits the floor, Laszlo's demeanor changes again, uh, and now he's he's kind of near the ground. Uh, pushing uh, corpses aside to look for one uh, that looks just about right, and uh, Onyx is just like, oh, second chance friend, yes, mm. second chance, ooh. And I'm gonna cast Command Skeletons uh, and bring uh, one of them back. <laughs> okay, so you are currently, you know, in the process of this harried combat, you reach over to find one of the corpses mostly eaten, and as you draw forth kind of the, the, the undeath from within, you watch as this body suddenly a skeletal hand kind of almost pushes through its own flesh. It's like watching a skeleton claw its way out of the, the body that once contained it. And the bones that were once broken and pulled apart snap together until eventually you watch this humanoid skeleton and all of it still gashed and clawed glory stand right next to you. Gruesome. I also love how you have a spot for, I, I can name this skeleton. Yes, you can, <laughs> if you want to. Yeah. It's a pet of some sort. <laughs> yeah. Like, that would be great to, you know. <laughs> well, what's his name? Uh, God, I, what do you think would be, Spell Slots. Uh, that's his name. Uh, <laughs> uh, spell Slots. Yeah, Spell Slots, because I will be out of him soon. Uh, <laughs> and that's you good trying to find the right one gave me a vision of being at the grocery store and going like, which one's the right avocado? No, <laughs> no, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. That yeah. skeleton that's right that's there. That's yeah. This got some good bones. <laughs> All right. Uh, like yeah. Your skeleton can take a turn if he wants to. Oh, really? Yeah. On this turn? Okay. Uh, I'll send him out to go uh, hit one of those bad guys that it's running after. You got it. So the skeleton immediately after you know, forming up, <laughs> lunges forward and takes a swing at one of the ghouls. 14? 14 does hit, actually. Oh, wow. So go ahead and roll damage. Uh, <laughs> three. Three damage. Not a whole lot, but you know, doesn't hurt either. Both Starts lots. Come beating on. it. He's so cute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, boy, like, oh, slots. <laughs> slots is smaller than the other skeletons. Like, he's his best. He's just exactly. like, really tidy. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. That finish your turn, Leslie? Uh, as a bonus action, uh, I want to, while I'm still down down there looking for uh, corpses, uh, I want to cast Bone Armor. Okay, go for it. Nice. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. So, from the other corpses that you did not choose from, two of the other nearby ones, you watch as sh sections of their bone begins to also pull out of the flesh, the, the soft, easy to tear through flesh, and then begin to sh 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 
assemble around you like this suit of white, pale, somewhat bloody armor. I love it. Uh, do, 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 six. All right, so you have six temporary hit points from that. Yeah. Awesome. Finishing Laszlo's turn, Toro, you're up. Mordred, you're on deck. Okay, I'm gonna, just really pissed off at these ones that are here, I'm gonna push the one that's on me off. I'm gonna spend 12 hatred to do rapid fire. You and got just it. go just full on every moving body that I can see. So the one that's on me, first one, uh, that was cocked. Okay, that is 13. 13 to hit, you said? Yeah, to hit. That hits. And let's see, This these are d6 plus two. Ugh, three damage on that one. Three damage. Uh, all right, he's still standing. This is the same one you shot earlier. Yes. He's, he's like riddled with holes. And like <laughs> 15 to hit. That hits. Okay, that should do it. Uh, seven, uh, eight damage. Poof, takes him out. <laughs> Falls to the ground. Okay, that was two shots. Four more attacks. Uh, to the one that's, uh, actually I'm gonna go to the ones that are on Laszlo. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, 18 really, to hit. There's only really one left on Laszlo, the other one's rushed towards, okay. or I think actually all of them rushed towards yeah, Mordred. Yeah, the backs are probably towards me though. All right, the ones that are rushing away okay. um, from Laszlo. So 18 to hit on that one. That hits. And seven damage. Seven damage, all right. That one's still standing, but it's real rough. I'm gonna hit him again. Um, ooh, yikes, 11. 11 does not hit. Okay, I'm gonna blood. shoot at him again. That should do it, 18 to hit. That hits. And that's eight damage. That one falls. <laughs> And I've got one more shot mm -hmm. to the next one that I can see. That's a seven, so uh, 12 to hit. 12 just hits. Great. One, two, da uh, three damage. Three damage. All right, so <clears throat> if you angrily turn around, channeling your hatred, unleash this, this barrage of crossbow shots in the direction you watch as three of these creatures fall to the ground, no longer moving. You steady yourself. Filth. <laughs> Perfect. Does that finish your turn? Yeah, it finishes my turn. All right, Toro's done. Mordred, you're up. Remy, you're on deck. I have to my shield, and it begins to uh, emit white radiant fire, and um, I will use a shield bash, uh, and I will charge one of them, and any of the others that are within five feet of it must all make a deck save and take holy damage. You've got it. By the light be damned! <laughs> you watch as the shield suddenly begins to fill with this radiant energy and with a sudden impacting blast, like iron on stone, this echoing explosion <laughs> across the inside of this crypt catches your ears as you see this flash of energy. Um, what's the damage on this? 20 points if Ooh, they fail. Good roll. Uh, well, that's a fail. Fail. Fail and fail. With that final flash, you watch as the bodies go flying and the few still standing ghouls are scattered in pieces across the far end of this chamber as silence once more takes the interior of this dungeon. I and turn back into my human form. Mm. Oh. That was a nice warm up. But I think it's agreed. Next time we walk into a hallway, we check the ceilings. That was unnecessary. But it was fun. I know. Feeling really good, actually. You're not the one covered in goblin parts. No, I actually look pretty damn good. <laughs> mm. oh. All right, shall we continue on? Uh, this is the end of the hall, actually. It, oh. en it ends here at the bodies. The, oh. It narrowed and then came to a finishing end. Well. We went the wrong way. <laughs> Turn around. <laughs> Is there anything else but here? Any clay pots? Any pots? <laughs> <laughs> there are chest. three pots, no chests. There are the, the tattered corpses and the three pots. That's I read all there one is. of them. <laughs> <laughs> is anybody else going to claim the other pots? I'm not going to I'm going to miss one of the pots. <laughs> All right, uh, you'd have to teleport there, I'm just saying, because yes. right now there is a wear gator that is just wading into them. <laughs> Can I use my maul action <laughs> to maul the clay pot? I'll allow it, you I'll don't know, gain any spirit from it, but, but you can. I've got right. a whole sheet Imagine of unpopped bubble feet. wrap for you. Yeah, okay, you can do that. Okay, I want one right. pot. There you go, pot. so one right. pot bursts with a blast of arcane energy from your magic missile, causing it to scatter across the chamber. Four gold drops from that one. Yes. Uh, the two are the ones that, <laughs> that you tear into, uh, Remy, um, one of them contains 40 gold pieces. 
Uh, and the other is empty. Okay, well, that's that was worth it. It is strange, though. Most things you hit in this world do tend to erupt into gold coins. I agree. Oh, that's try, strange. I try not to question it, but where do they come from? <laughs> I Who once is... hit a waffle, and it turned into three gold coins. <laughs> We're like one Why would that away be? from the Truman Show right here. <laughs> <laughs> Video game. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's like another realm, you know, where there's just piles of gold. Pocket A distant yes. echo of some distant screech <laughs> suddenly cuts you off this deep metaphysical conversation. Good knowing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Does it sound like it came from the left or the right? Yeah, pad? that the narrative structure is calling us. <laughs> I feel a deep calling. Uh, nine. To tell. It sounded pretty muffled, <laughs> but nothing beyond that, really. Did you hear the call? No. Something's around. Which direction? I don't know. I couldn't tell. It was oh. muffled. <laughs> did, anyone, did anyone else hear it? <laughs> no, you guys were having conversations. But. Oh, we were talking about <laughs> metaphysics. Uh, yeah. uh, I'm going to go back out to yeah. where the, the three branches start. Okay. Yeah. Back it up, yeah. everyone. Yeah. Mm. All right, so you're back at the T intersection facing the other direction. You have right and left. I'm gonna hold my uh, my wrist up and let my snake lick the air and see if it points in a certain direction. Oh, that's cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the snake is unfamiliar with crypt environments and is uncertain how to tell which direction to go. It's all right, baby. You'll get it someday. It slithers sadly back onto your wrist. <laughs> Familiars can sometimes uh, be yeah. disappointing. I'd like to like press my ear to really the ground to okay. see if I can yeah, hear it. where the call and rumbling is coming from. Okay, make perception. Nice try. Okay. <laughs> uh, nineteen. Nineteen, not bad. As you put your ear against the stone in the ground, you hear faint scraping noises from both directions. Which scraping sounds eviler? There's more of them to the right. A, a, a more independent and, and fainter one to the left. Okay. Hmm. The right seems dangerous. The left also seems dangerous. Take your pick. What are you feeling? I'm feeling if we're looking for some fun, we go to the right. If we're looking to stay safe, we go to the left. Right it is. Let's go to the right. You guys are psychopaths. Yeah. <laughs> all right. You all <laughs> traveled to the right, and for about 15 feet, as you all have your weapons at the ready, eyes peeled, you come upon a massive, solid iron door that has chains pulled across the front of it and a heavy lock affixed to it. Hmm, I actually might be able to handle this. I'm gonna try and pick it. Okay, go ahead and roll a d20, add your dexterity modifier. Okay. Ew, my dex, just my just your dex straight mod. dex. Okay. Aw, oh, poop, that was almost great. <laughs> 15 total. Or sorry, 13 total. 13. Rolled eight. Okay, with the 13, you watch as your awesome bad on her home turf demon hunter gets down and takes out her thieves' tools. Yes. And with a whip of the wrist, achieve nothing. <laughs> it is not budging. Do we need to get a key? <sighs> what about your horns? No, I just, I, I um, just give me a moment. I just punch it. I just try and punch it like the fawns. Make a strength check. <laughs> toro, Toro. <laughs> so, why couldn't have that been my lock picking check? Uh, what's my strength? Oh, I have no but 18. 18, good roll. Um, your knuckles are bleeding. <sighs> Blast. Yeah, I think we need to find a key. But with the heavy impact against an iron door, the echo on the other side, boom, boom definitely reverberates throughout the nearby chambers. You get the sense that what any sort of sense of surprise you may have had at this point, um, you've definitely made your presence known in the proximity of this door. It's the door's fault. <clears throat> well, if the surprise is ruined, um, I'll just magic missile the lock. Ooh. Okay. Go ahead and roll some damage. All right, just damage, or I don't even need to roll the hit. Roll the hit just in case. Okay. Because I like ones. Okay. Uh, 17. 17. Does that hit a door? It hits. Okay. Go ahead and roll damage. I shall. Do, do, do. Four plus two. Six. Okay. You blast it once, 
and kind of glancing at it, this is a very heavy door. Mm. And while the magic missile, the arcane blast from it is generally pretty powerful against softer, fleshier things, mm -hmm. it's not really gaining any purchase against this door's lock, unfortunately. Yeah, it's Maybe the door's fault. Find another way around. Maybe there's a key down the other hallway. To the left. Look for keys all the while. Yeah. Key. Place my hand keys, on the keys, door keys. before we go. We'll play later. Doors. <laughs> <laughs> spell slots goes like. Ah, <laughs> oh, spell slot. Uh, <laughs> glad right. you're with us, buddy. <laughs> spell slots is the best. He's my favorite character in the story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Continuing onward in the other path, this is a relatively lengthy hallway that continues on for a bit. There are pots here, but they're already broken. Oh. What? Um, you do eventually, quietly, come upon a left-hand turn, and in the next hall, you can just faintly hear movement, scrambling, footfalls and shifting, scrapes against the stone. Is there anything on the ceiling? Make a perception check. Okay. Someone knows the secrets of the pots. <laughs> it's a very competent four. Gosh. <laughs> Glancing up at the ceiling above, which it only hits about a, a 10-foot ceiling at this portion of the tunnel, and with the torchlight you do carry, you're pretty sure there's nothing on the ceiling, but who knows? We're absolutely safe. I'm gonna kind of scurry yeah, ahead a bit. Around. Yeah, can we see what's making that scurrying noise ahead? Can we like, Scooby-Doo? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, no, no. One by one, the heads <laughs> up here in a totem. Um, you can see in this next chamber a cluster of pots and small cases, all open or broken in various states, and there is a, a dressed humanoid you see from the back that is currently like rummaging through one of these right now. You can see some coins spill out of his grasp, and quickly reaches down and snatches them and puts them within a, a pocket, and it's just talking to itself. Is this a treasure goblin? Is this oh my god, is it? Goblin? Is it a treasure goblin? It's hard to see from the side. Uh, kill him! I just yell. <laughs> roll attack. Roll, roll attack. Get away. I blocked the door. I blocked the hallway so we can't run. Roll to attack twice. Actually, do I. Would this. Would I get hatred for this? Uh, it, is, it is the first round of combat. Actually, you... no, I can't. I wouldn't have enough hatred. So, no. Hungering arrow. Hungering okay. arrow. Okay, two, those are both, that's a natural 20 and an 18. A natural 20? Oh, yeah. That's a critical hit, so yeah, yeah. Uh, roll damage on both, uh, doubling the dice damage on the first one. Okay, okay, what do I roll? New class! Okay, first one, that's a four, so eight doubled plus five, so uh, 13. Wait, oh, no. No, so, so, no. Yes, eight doubled plus five. No, 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 four doubled. So, oh, okay. gotcha, you, gotcha. You. So four doubled to eight, so eight okay. plus five. Yeah, that brings it to 13. 13 yep. damage on the on the crit, and then for the other one, I rolled a one on damage, so six total. Gotcha, okay, so 19 damage total. Yeah. So as you come the corner, fire both of these, the individual turns around and you see for a brief second, uh, just a dude um, oh. in, like, in, in, in just normal clothes um, with, a, with, a, with a small package, who just like goes, what? Oh! Treasure just goblin. spits blood out of his mouth, and there's these two crossbow bolts in his chest. He's like, <laughs> oh dear. Oh. 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 Was I not? Is was he... I not supposed to? He falls onto the ground, and he's like bleeding out. <laughs> oh. Ah, run over. <laughs> run over to him. Do, do, do you have a key to the lock on the other side? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, spitting yeah, blood up. Uh, Wait, I, just let I, him die, and I then Laszlo. The ground under this man. Oh. Really? Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> he starts to heal. So does anybody else standing around him. Ooh, Ooh we're, getting, we're getting healed. Okay. <laughs> I'll take Four rounds of one d six plus two. What were you saying, Indra? I was gonna say if you just let him die, Laszlo <laughs> could have just talked to him. It would have been much easier. <laughs> He begins to heal up a little bit in his wounds. Take the arrows out. He sits up, he's like, no, no, what's he wants? I can't stop, I can't stop. I have to get it to him. And he goes over and grabs the bag and goes, and like ignoring you entirely, goes back to the boxes and starts just like taking whatever he can find and throwing it into the sack. Get what for whom? 
For the child. For the child. Yeah, it needs. It needs all the all the treasure valuables. Don't even think about it. His eyes glance past all of you as his wounds heal him back to full. Whoa, 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 whoa. I just transformed my arm into a crocodile arm. <laughs> 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 I'm aware of crocodile. That means my arm. I know, I know, I know. I mean, it's like a crocodile arm. Fair enough. Fair Is enough. anyone else picturing the crocodile with fur, though? Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's yeah. Yeah. So, sanctuary ecology is a little different than mm -hmm. earth ecology. Crocodiles here be furry. Um, <laughs> Okay. Whatever you want to picture. Um, wild look in his eye. He's surrounded by five well armored dungeon delvers at this point. He is wearing normal clothing and currently holding on one hand this kind of half open bag, and the other pulls out a dagger and goes, <sighs> Give me your belongings. Pull up Give me your valuables. Crossbows and point them at him. Onyx is very happy at all of this. <laughs> Kill him again. Do it again. <laughs> See, Onyx knows what's up. Honestly, you're about five seconds from that being your reality if you don't stop and tell us what you're doing. You'll kill me if I don't bring enough back for him. Who's the I child? Uh, the child below. Through the door with a lock. Uh, beyond that, I, I, I. So you have a key? Maybe. Tell you what. It. We'll, uh, we'll bring all your treasure to the child for you. No, no, I, I have to do it. I have to. All right, well, how about in exchange? You can come with us. Okay, okay. And when we did this, you'll give me your belongings? Sure. What's your name? Johnny. Johnny. Johnny, yeah. Uh... Nice to meet you, Johnny. <sighs> Give them to me? Not now. Okay, but then. <laughs> sure. Okay. And he hits the bag up over one shoulder like this half crazed Santa gnome figure. Blades a lot in front. So go on, I'm following. I really did think he was a treasure goblin. I did too. <laughs> I was about to confirm all of my theories for this other dimensional realm just filled <laughs> with gold and treasure. It was this close. <laughs> I know it's real. <clears throat> I'm regretting my choice to bring this man back from the brink. Looks over at you with this like most mostly gum-filled occasional tooth grin. <clears throat> well, <gasps> it reaches into his pocket and pulls out this long rusted key and goes, yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> pulls his dagger out. <clears throat> Later. You know what? Have a seat. If you want me to be able to help you all, I need to meditate for a while. How long? 30 to 60 minutes. Oh, what? We just got started. I know. We'll just do a montage. It's fine. <laughs> what, what's a montage? <laughs> well, it's a great hotel. <laughs> it's been a bunch of activities I've partaken in a very long period of time. It's shortened down into a much more easy to grasp scenario for the audience. <laughs> right, I like Johnny's that with like, like arrows in Oh, him I love too. it. <laughs> Toro does push-ups. Yeah. <laughs> Are you taking a rest here? If if the game and the group will allow. That's up to you guys. I'll just mark it here. Uh, marking it. Uh. Things are happening below. It's up to you. It's skin off your back, it's not mine. <sighs> All right, yeah. I guess fine. Okay. Yeah, I think I think it's a good idea. We uh, we could ask our little friend a little bit more about. I'm sorry, Johnny. Yeah, yeah. We're not going. Hmm. We're not moving. Well, uh, thirty. You minutes. were hurt, and he had to heal you, so now he needs to rest. Which could have been avoided if we just let him die, like I said. But whatever. Not wrong. Well. He's just rummaging through his bag. He's kind of ignoring your questions for a moment. He's just kind of checking, counting things. What is it? Okay. Spell slots. Do you know any good musical routines? Uh, <laughs> Laz Laszlo does n is not excited about spell slots. Uh, <laughs> 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 he, has, he has become a stepdad overnight. <laughs> <laughs> 
He's got all the two, all the attention. Yeah, like, <laughs> not very happy about that. Uh, but what did you ask? I'm sorry. <laughs> if he knows any good musical numbers. Uh, hey, buddy. Um, <laughs> can you like play those things like a like a xylophone or something? you know any like? Kanye, or do you know <laughs> what? What can you do? What is what is like his? Sir Kanye elegance? of the, the, the Zaka Room was a very well-known traveling bard oh, yeah. crusader. <laughs> oh, <he's>, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, just deep tracks. God, spell slots. <laughs> <laughs> Some hits. <laughs> <laughs> this skeleton mainly sits in like a dark wave house yeah. vicinity, so it's not, not quite hitting the right vibe for you, unfortunately. Yeah. But it's the only skeleton you got at the moment, so. <laughs> we'll say you finish your 30 minute uh, period of time of rest, which, when it comes to an end, as you all stand at the ready, you can see that Johnny is looking very impatient at this point, kind of pacing, going, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, to himself, his eyes looking at nothing in particular, and you hear this like distant shriek down the distance down the hallway, this like, <laughs> Oh, come on. Oh, cool. That was really cool. Oh, creep. <laughs> so, what are you doing? All right, doing? you feeling better? Come on, auto-tune skeleton. <laughs> Let's go. It's not even early coming. It's later coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, as you head back towards the, the large iron door, indeed, the key does open it. And as the door opens to the side, you can see within the next portion of the chamber, uh, the hallway curves to the right slightly and following it with the light, eventually you see that opens into wide archways and this kind of faint glow of candlelight that greets you on the opposite side. You can see uh, a beautiful display of large statues depicting angelic figures, a central one in heavy armor uh, and hood that's looming over a wide staircase, the hood itself empty, sword in front. Uh, you can see this staircase descends below, but standing before this armored figure, you see a, uh, a humanoid shape uh, wearing its own kind of haphazard armor turned away from you, and as it spins, you see this skeletal entity wearing old, rusted, dusty Herodric armor. As it looks back towards you all, as you spin around the edge, it kind of <laughs> And as it kind of raises its hands, you hear the sound of scratches as the walls you now notice are filled ceiling to floor with stone tombs that begin to spill. <laughs> the lid spilling open as skeletons <laughs> scramble out in your direction and begin to swarm towards you as the one armored skeleton begins to curl its hands in the air, and you see arcane runes beginning to swirl on the floor in front of it. I need all of you to roll initiative. Oh boy. Ooh, whatever, we got a skeleton too. It's fine. <laughs> it's true. All right. Top of the round, Remy and Lazlo, you're up. You can see now between there's this one central armored skeleton that stands taller than the rest that is currently in the process of, of some sort of dark purple incantation. You see the energy swirling off of it and the rune on the ground in front of it beginning to brighten. You can see now four other skeletons that have crawled out of the tombs, drawing like rusted weapons and beginning to scatter their way towards you. And in the back of the room, two of the skeletons that fell, bringing a total of six, have bows and arrows that begin to and reach Ooh, back, oh, pulling geez. them taut. Mm. So. Here we go, eight D8s and heartbreak. <laughs> <laughs> What are you two doing? I'm going to whip my arm up, and my snake's going to shoot forward from my arm, and a spiritual uh, blade is going to shoot forward towards the armored creature. Oh, cool. And I'm going to cast Wind Shear. You've got it. Okay. Nice. Go ahead and roll an attack for that. Uh, which one? The, the one in the armor? Yes. Okay. Uh, 17 to hit. That indeed hits. Yes. So that's 3d8. Matt, you said there was one big baddie and two? Two archers and then four melee skeletons. Okay, and one big baddie? Yeah. That's okay. So 11 damage. 11 points of damage, not bad. Ooh, but my movement is increased by 10 feet until the end of my next turn. Indeed. So you have some faster movement, and don't forget to generate eight spirit from that. Yes. Um, Alrighty. So as the, the 
the blast of razor sharp wind arcs out from your hand. You see it strikes the creature and actually shears off part of its shoulder armor. It kind of cracks in the bone. You can see it sustained damage from the impact, but it still stands there, continuing to cast its arms still undulating in space. How far away is it from me now? Uh, you guys are right at the entrance, so that's about 15 feet from you. And the melee skeletons are quickly rushing in, kind of at the same plane. The archers are about 30 feet from you in the distance. I'm gonna run forward since I've got extra movement speed now, and I'm gonna run forward and uh, I'm gonna run towards the armored guy, just straight into the middle. Easily enough. Um, and I'm gonna, for a bonus action, cast Swarm at him. You got it. All right, as you rush forward towards the front, you know, in, in your awesome druid. Uh, swamp Druid form, dart towards it. As you do, you bring your arm up, and out of the inside of your outfit, these insects begin to crawl out and then just whip around this creature. Would you roll to attack? Uh, 15 plus 7. 15 plus 7 definitely hits. Go ahead and roll damage for that. Uh, six points six of additional points damage. Of damage. You got it. Uh, it's swirling around inside, since this is not a fleshy creature. You can hear them like buzzing and hitting the inside of the rib cage and the, the armor from the interior. You see, it's it's sustaining damage, but not as much as you would hope, given the circumstances. But nevertheless, you are now there, right up in front of it. You can see within its deep, sunken, dark sockets these faint points of glowing purple energy, matching the same arcane force that it's currently calling to it. That finishes your turn. So you are right in the center now, and all eyes are currently on you. Um, Laszlo, what are you doing? Yeah, as Remy uh, starts to run forward, Laszlo knee, uh, gets down on one knee and starts punching uh, the cement, and I'm gonna cast Death Nova. Ooh! So all this smoke is like kind of coming up um, above him, or below him, I guess. You've got it. Uh, so it's a DC 15 constitution save. It is. It's also all creatures, just, just so you know. Yeah. That does include your friends too, so you're gonna want to try and maneuver. Yeah, so if he's 15 feet, uh, is she right at 15 feet, or is she at like 10 feet? She's at 15 feet ahead of you. You'd have to probably go far to one side or the other to try and avoid her. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, right or left corner? Uh, left. We've been avoiding left this entire game, so. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> to the left, you Zoolander it over to the left-hand corner, <laughs> punch the ground, and this, this green energy swirls up and with the impact, <laughs> darts outward as all this toxic, poisonous magical energy radiates outward. It swarms into and hits the two skeletons and the central skeleton um, to minimal effect. Go ahead and roll damage. Uh, 12. 12 damage, all right. You've got it. It hits them, and you watch as they, they you know, withdraw from this. They do all fail their saves, but even so, Poison doesn't seem to have the same impact on skeletal entities, and you realize that moment like, ah, dang it. Uh, did some damage, but uh, not as much as you had hoped. Uh, and uh, Spell Slots can take his turn as well, if you'd like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <No> spell Slots! <laughs> Getting ready for it. Uh, yeah, he's gonna make a melee attack at the closest one. You got it, all right. Uh, 11. 11 does not hit. He goes ah, and arcs wide and just kind of hits off the bones. Now it's just skeleton and skeleton slap fight. He's a college dropout. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, I'm in the room for a lot of us. Um, all right, that finishes your turn, Laszlo. Uh, yes. All right, Mordred, you're up. Yes, um, I'm going to charge in and run up alongside of Remuel, and as I do so, I'm going to recite the laws of justice so that I and my companions are resistant to cold, fire, and lightning damage for a bit. Uh, takes away four points of wrath, and I will punish the big baddie uh, with two swings of my morning star. You've got it. As a note for you as well, which I just recall, after you, sh you strike, the creature of this insect swarm around it, this like pulse of energy comes off of it, and you watch as these kind of like arcane needles shoot out in your direction. And you did uh, on that one, you took five points of fire damage as they blast on you. It seemed to almost reflect some of the damage back at you. 
What are you doing on your turn? Uh, I So bonus action for Laws of Justice, which gives resistance. I don't know if it was in time. For cold Not for fire. her, but it will for the next round. Okay, Cold Fire and Lightning for to the start of my next turn. You got it. And then I used Punish, so I got two attack actions, essentially, and I rolled, I got 22 on both. Both of those hit, yeah. All right, so that is 1d8. Five, five, seven, six is 13. And this is against I, the armored one? Hmm? The armored one or standard? Against the, the mate, the cast. You got it, cast, all right. Cast. So that buffs up my own AC a bit and charges my wrath again, and that's the end of my turn. Okay, that was 13 damage from both of those together? Uh, to, all told, yeah, yeah. 13 times. You got it, already. So uh, as you go ahead and strike with both of those, your flail kind of hitting at the side, and then once again over the top of the shield, uh, each impact blasts into, and you can see it reel from the impact, and that same arcane energy seems to fire that damage back out at you as these two spears of, of burning white hot magic. Uh, that is a 13, I believe, misses you. No. Uh, but a 24 does hit you. That hits. You take, it would be seven points of fire damage, but because of your resistance, it reduces it to three. Nice. Good call. All right. Finishing up Mordred's turn, it is now Crush the Unforgiven's turn. Crush? Crush the, the Unforgiven. The, the armored skeleton you can see now finishes its casting, and as it does in the center of the floor, a new skeleton appears. Oh. You get the sense this one can just bring more skeletons. Oh. 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 That's a sense we get, guys. You get a sense <laughs> of that. <laughs> it's a weird thing. <laughs> weird thing about that one. Let's see if that recharges on its turn. Um, yeah, it recharges. Okay. Uh, it is going to then do a burning dart as it's standing right there, and it's going to go ahead and fling the dart at you since you're the one who first came at it, and you're the one. Mm, no, actually, it's going to go for you since you're the one who did the most damage to it. Natural 19. Uh, that puts it at a 22, 23 to hit. Yes. Alrighty. So you take 10 fire damage, reduced to five mm. as it blasts into your face. The shield catches part of it, and the rest of your your lawful defense manages to shrug it off. Ah, it feels good. <sighs> Finishing its turn, that brings us to uh, Toro and Indra. Do you want to go first, or? Uh, what is the new skeleton holding? Is it a melee or is it an archer? Uh, that is a melee. Okay. Giant uh, execution is axe, actually. Ugh. Why did cool, I ask? Cool, 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 cool. Um, you can go first. Okay. Yeah. I'm just gonna slowly walk up, drawing my crossbows. I'm gonna say, if it bleeds, you can kill it. And I'm gonna cast Marked for Death. <laughs> but they don't bleed. Oh, they don't bleed. <laughs> well, the big baby bleeds a little. Right? It bleeds a little, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you all go, yeah. 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 <laughs> and I'm going to do Hungering Arrow Pew Pew. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> the whole group is like, yes, and, yes. Yeah. And. <laughs> <laughs> don't stop her improv. You know what? Yeah. I don't want to yuck your yum. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> It's not my fault this is the lines that they're set for this ability. <laughs> All right. All right, so where are the attack rolls? And you're attacking uh, which ones here? I'm going to attack just two hits of the big baddie. You got it. Um, okay, so that first one is a 17, and the second attack is a 23. Both hit. Go ahead and roll damage. And these are extra d6s because he is marked. So for the first one, uh, okay, that's... Uh, uh, 11 damage total. 11 damage, you got it. For the second one. Oh. Go ahead. Um, is a uh, 13 damage total. Nice. So as you come around and you fire twice out of the arrows, hit the armor, and you can see another chunk of armor falls off of it. Uh, the bones are now splintering from the impact of the damage it's taken. It's looking like it's it's having a hard time holding itself together, and all the other skeletons around it are eager to rush in and try and offer protection. Okay. Um, you also notice. Not bleeding. Yeah. Hmm. Not yet. <laughs> yet. Mm -hmm. exactly. Go back to the writers. <laughs> <laughs> Systemic dialogue. Yeah. Just roll with it. <laughs> All right, finishing your go. Uh, in there. Question. Yes. Uh, Big Batty yeah. is here. Uh, my friends are in front of him. Du directly, directly in front, in front of him. Um, however, the archers are behind him. Correct. How close would you say these archers are? They'd be about 15 feet from him. Wonderful. As in, a 15 feet diameter could catch both this yes. big baddie and these archers. Yes. Cool, then I am going to uh, flick my hair behind my, well, get it caught on my lip gloss like a really cool person, and I'm gonna <laughs> cast a meteor right in the middle. Oh, okay. Of all of them. Okay. Yes. 
uh, hoping to end this quickly. And she's and just, just gonna scoff as she summons a giant meteor from yeah. above? Yeah, the so, no? so as, as, as you watch as Indra pulls the staff forward, scoffs frustratedly and kind of spins her staff in the air, you're all engaged in these skeletons, but you hear this this horrible tearing sound, and you all can't help but glance up as in the air above this staircase and where this battle is taken, you see a sliver of reality is suddenly carved and open, and you see a dark expanse of stars and purplish blue mist, and from that, a bright light as a flaming rock <laughs> apparates out of it and slams into the top of the staircase and explodes. You can see flame just spirals around and almost engulfs both of you at the front of this battle, but just manages to just singe your eyebrows. You don't have any eyebrows, so you don't have to worry about that, but it does catch you a little <laughs> off guard. A single hair on my body. <laughs> Go ahead, roll damage on that. Uh, I had to bring out extra <laughs> E6s for this one. Good lord. Who? 12? Who's good at math here? <laughs> no. Bell slot. Just say it. Just say it. Okay, 12 <laughs> plus <laughs> eight <laughs> plus <laughs> five plus five <laughs> 37. plus seven. 37 points of fire damage. 37 right. points of fire damage. And your spell DC on that one 16 is? dex. Got it. Uh, failure on Crush the Unforgiven. Failure on the Archer. Love hearing it. Failure on the other Archer. Love hearing it. Uh, as the flames and explosion die down for a second, the the next sound you hear is the clattering of scattered bones raining down from the opposite side of the chamber as the two archer skeletons are blown apart and thrown across the opposite side. Uh, the central skeleton, the armor, you now see as it looks out, the purple light in its eyes blinks out and the bones <laughs> scatter on the inside, hitting the ground, destroyed. Andrew just kind of brushes off some dust on her shoulder. She's like, <laughs> pathetic. The big guy? The big guy? Yeah, he just fell to the ground. But there are still four other skeletons, five technically, one with a giant axe. Okay. And it's now their turn. Where's our dude? Where's the dude we came in here with? Is he hanging no. back? Oh, yeah. He's not in the middle of this battle. He's just back in the hallway. He's back there? Yeah, with his dagger, like, ah! <laughs> I'm Johnny! Ah! What do you want from me? <laughs> That's his liner. I'm John. I'm Johnny. Like a, He's in um, his own movie right now. Right? Exactly. <laughs> well, it's a proper NPC. Once you cycle the dialogue, he just has the one thing he says to you. I'm Johnny. I'm Johnny. I'm Johnny. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, two skeletons rushing up towards you, uh, Remy. Mm -hmm. Going to strike. Oh, that's a natural twenty. That's eight points of physical damage. And the other one is going to be a. I'm rolling pretty well. A twenty to hit. Four points of physical damage, so a total of 12 against you. Cool. Uh, other two are rushing up against you since you're right in the front. Yes. Uh, that's a 10, which misses. <laughs> and another natural 20. Oh! You take eight points of physical damage from that secondary strike. Okay. Uh, and they're, they're just swarming at you, hacking away, and the one with the executioner's axe. Uh, let's roll to see which one of you goes after. All right. You. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm sitting there going. <laughs> Just looking over at him suggestively. So here's the thing. If it bleeds, you can kill it. <laughs> yeah. They're aware. Um, as the two skeletons are rushing at you and you're fighting them off, you can't help but in the background see the one skeleton kind of glance up at you, its head cocked to one side as it slowly lifts this massive axe that weighs immense. Immense amounts. Oh, no. What's up, buddy? Large swing! <laughs> right into the ground about a foot from you. Not a great aim on this skeleton. Probably not used to using an axe and just completely whiffs entirely and kind of looks at you. I. This is awkward. I feel bad for you. <laughs> and is now wedging out of the ground while he brings us back to Remy and Laszlo's go. <laughs> uh, so, wait, are they in a line? Uh, they are pretty close to a line, yeah. Hmm. I'd say three of them are in a line. Doesn't matter, can't do it anyway, hold on. But they're close to each other. <laughs> they're yes. within five feet of each other. Three of them are, yes. Yeah, screw it. <laughs> I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna look up and I'm gonna find a big piece of rock from some of the pile of meteorite that fell down. <laughs> you got it. I'm gonna lift it up and cast Landslide on three of the creatures in front of me. All right. In hopefully including the one with the giant Executioner's Axe. Okay, go ahead and roll an attack for all three of them. Executioner's Axe and the two next to him. Okay. Mm Get it, Stevie Nicks. <laughs> oh, he beat me to it. 
And if you see Ooh. my reflection. Uh, the first one is. Oh! Who was singing that? Oh, no, dang. <laughs> The first one is 17. That hits. That wasn't so do I add anything? Oh, yes, I do. Oh, the first one is 24. 24, that definitely hits. The second one is 13. 13 just hits. Why do you still have your... And the last one definitely hits. It's a 23. Yeah. Go ahead and roll damage for... Just roll damage uh, for each of them, yeah. Okay. This is an individual. Uh, 3d10. Executioner first. Uh, 3 plus 9 is 12, plus 6 is 18. 18. Other two? Nine, 15, uh, 17. Okay. Uh, five plus six is 11 on the last one. Got it. Okay. So, as you pull up a chunk of the meteor that was summoned through space by Indra, you lift it up into the ceiling. <clears throat> and with a crack and impact, it brings elements of dirt and earth and rock from above. And as it slams down to that central space, broken apart from the multiple impacts, it causes this shower of sharp shards of rock, stone, and whatever piece of the nearby structure was kind of carved free from it. And as it does, you watch as the, the executioner skeleton acts high in the air for a secondary strike, is smashed beneath it and flattened into a bunch of broke pieces of bone. The two of the skeletons to its side kind of look up and are simultaneously smashed as well. Yeah. We're down to two skeletons. That brings us to you, Laszlo. Cool. Are they in a row at all? Uh, <laughs> the, the, these, they're in a row, but they're, they're distant from each other. Okay. Like, they're on opposite ends, about, like, I'd say 30 feet from each other. Okay, I'm just going to run up to one, uh, place my hands on its head, and siphon its, um, well, can I, is siphon its blood? Does it have blood? Siphon life. Life. It's, yes. it's a little more of its essence. In the, exactly. Because video game. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 19. 19 does hit. Go ahead and roll damage. And Mordor in your deck. Uh, 10. 10 damage. That does it. As you reach out and extend your hand towards it, you watch as its skeletons shake, and what faint bit of magic that still remains holding it animated is pulled away. And as it does, the skeleton seems to almost implode your direction, sending bones scattering to the ground by your feet. And you heal up 1d4. Ooh, awesome. Uh, four. There you go. And I'm a cell, uh, while I'm doing this, uh, spell slots is running to the other side. Uh, to hit the other dude? To hit the other dude. You got it. It's so sad, because I'm picturing him a lot smaller than the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see what he gets. He's trying so hard. He's trying like, so hard. Yeah. The way you keep describing him, I imagine him in like Yeezys, like <laughs> <laughs> Yeezys and joggers. Mm -hmm. uh, Fourteen. Fourteen does hit. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and roll damage. This is the last standing skeleton. Oh, three. He Three rolled a one. Oh. <laughs> Big old heavy fist ball, boof, and the skeleton <laughs> takes the hit, but it's still standing. It's looking damaged, but it's still standing. That and, finishes. Uh, or what else you got? And I'm going to cast uh, Devour again. If there, There's a bunch. No, they're not corpses. Sorry. Well, yeah. They're skeletons. They're, they're, Do they count as corpses? They are, technically would not count as corpses okay. in this instance, yeah. Then that's it. Sorry. No. All right. Question. Are skeletons yeah. corpses? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So two are up right now, yeah? One is up. One, just one? Yes. Uh, I just hoist up my morning star and say, I hate to do it. No, I don't. <laughs> uh, is this pulverize? First, this is, nope, just oh, punishing punish me, sorry. again. Punish, yeah. Ooh, very low roll for the first. That's a 10. 10 misses. And a very low roll for the second, so I hate to do it, so I don't do it. 12 for the 12 second. 12 does it. Does hit? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Skeletons don't have the huge AC necessarily. No, oh, but it's a one on the damage, so four points of physical damage. Four points of physical damage. Still standing. <laughs> it's like <laughs> you do, you do about as much damage as spell slots did. <laughs> <laughs> the skeleton kind of looks back at you, trying to blow it over the rest of the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's mad dogging you from its eyeless sockets. Um, Crush is gone, so now it's Toro and Indra. Oh. Oh. All right, I, uh, I'll just look at Indra and be like, mind if I do the honors? Go for it. And just pull out a dagger and just... And I'm gonna do my impale. Go for yeah. it. Come on, 17 or 20? Oh, I got a 19! Or an 18! That's a crit! That's a crit. <laughs> ah, you can't that's, see! 
We're far from each other. Okay, uh, your impression says it all. So it gets a critical hit on a 17 or a 20. Yep. Or 17 through 20. So as you and it's 2d12 damage. Wait, let me get another d12. I never get the to do this. with one hit point left is, yeah. is going to Oh, hit. just wait for it. Socially <laughs> <laughs> uh, distant D&D. Uh, here we go, here we go. I never get to roll D12. This is awesome. Uh, okay, so that's uh, seven, eight, nine damage, so 18 plus five. 23 points. So 23 points of damage. This skeleton is like taking blow after blow and it's standing resolute against your you and your companions around you as it turns towards you. The dagger comes towards it as time slows. It sits there and <laughs> contemplates in that final moment. <laughs> Gary Jewel's play. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mad, <laughs> Mad World. Mad World right now. <laughs> it considers nothing because it's a skeleton. It right. has no mind. Um, where's the other skeletons exploded into chunks of bone the dagger just impacts, and as it hits the ground, it turns to dust. <sighs> the sheer force of it causing whatever, whatever possible undead willpower held it together to just atomize. You just hear my dagger go ding, ding, ding. ding. I think that's all of them. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Uh, technical question. Yes. Since it was both of our turns at the same time, do I still get that six arcane power? Uh, you, you get it back regardless outside of combat. You're the, you're the few that generates, you're, you're usually at full arcane power at the beginning of the fight. The problem is, a lot of your things cost a lot. But, so what we're saying is by the next fight, I'll have full arcane power? You will. Oh, I didn't okay. know that. There you go. That's the fun thing about know. wizards, they don't have to build up their resources. You start full, but you got to be careful how, what you use. Yeah, it's meteors. You know, Indeed. Whatever. <laughs> meteors. Alrighty. <laughs> so, meteors. checking the body of Kresh amongst the armor, you do find a couple of items, because it's Diablo, and that's one of the cool parts about it. Um, you, find, you find a magical ring of silver and gold inlay, and a beneath its helmet, you can see this kind of burial shawl or hood that it was keeping in there that seems to shimmer in the torchlight. Mm -hmm. um, the shawl is considered the shawl of the Forsaken, and it gives whoever wears it a plus one to hit on any of their abilities that roll to hit. Mm -hmm. The ring is the Ring of the Zakarum, which gives a plus one to your armor class and saves while it's worn. Ooh. As the one who casted the meteor that took out uh, this here, can I lay clay to the ring? Sure. Thank you. All right, so AC and saves go up by one. <laughs> who would like the Shawl of the Forsaken? I mean. I'm good with faith. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone feel like they need a little boost to their attacks? We're good as well. Onyx is so polite. <laughs> what about you, spell slots? <laughs> yeah! Oh. <laughs> Goes to Remy. You got it. So plus one to hit on all of your abilities. Sweet. <laughs> Descending the stairway beyond this encounter with Crash. The air grows slightly warmer and carries a hint of putrescence upon it. While the architecture remains a continuation of the crypt above, these walls have seen more wear and tear. Odd black iron chains dangle in places, some of them finishing in large metal hooks. The recurring chair beliefs and holy iconography you see are often scratched out or gouged entirely from the wall around you. When the steps come to an end, you can see this is a much larger chamber, maybe a hundred or so feet across, but there are four smaller, almost mausoleum-like doored chambers within. What would you like to do? Four. And they're, and they're closed? The doors are all closed? Seems to be, yeah. Do we hear any noise? Does Johnny have any inclination of where this child is? Johnny goes, Oh yeah, no. It's across the way. There's doors on the other side. That's where we're supposed to be. What's behind the other doors? The room where the child is. Come on. And you see him start walking ahead. Just let him go first, like 15, 20 feet. Let's yeah. see what happens. Also, he didn't answer our question no. at all. Yeah. No, no, he didn't. Mm. So we're him. gonna let him go and see what happens. Yeah. Okay. He walks along and goes, oh, and picks up a gold piece and puts it in the set. <laughs> Takes a few more steps. Oh, oh, that's nice. Yeah. Picks up like a little candle, 
the hand holder, puts <laughs> it in the it. bag. Stop it. <laughs> I'd run ahead of him and kick any pots that are. <laughs> 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 right, so like, shh, shh, shh. <laughs> like, no, no, wait. And uh, these pots are mostly empty. Uh, he does rush off into one chamber that has an open door and he goes, ooh, and darts in there. He's like easily distracted by his particular interest in finding uh, uh, worthwhile things in the vicinity. He rushes into the, there, there are the four chambers, you pass the first two, and the one on the right actually is an open door, and the one on the left is partially ajar. He rushes to the one on the left and begins to push his way in, um, and you see him disappear inside that chamber. Are there any screams coming from that chamber? <laughs> you don't hear any. Mm. Hmm. What about the one to the right? One to the right? Mm -hmm. uh, you don't hear anything coming from that one? You want to make a perception check? Sure. <laughs> Twenty. As you kind of glance through and look into this open doorway, this next room, it's far more grotesque than you were expecting. You can see all across the floor, there are dozens and dozens of long, rotted corpses, mostly skeletal, with bits of putrid flesh still hanging on the, on the bone. Um, there are many chains hanging from this room and bodies on hooks that have since all the meat has you know sloughed off. And it, 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 this is from a, it's been here for quite some time. It's been left still and filled with rot. Um, glancing inside in the middle of it, you see this squat, kind of tubby looking red and black skinned demonic creature that is sitting with tiny scrawny legs and scrawny arms in this very, very wide midsection. Its horns are kind of curled inward and it's just kind of sitting there chewing on a bone wing. <laughs> Does it see me? It does not see you. Well, make a stealth check, actually, for me, if you don't mind. Oh, God. Mm hmm. Uh, 12. It <laughs> <laughs> looks up at you, ah, darts off into the shadow nearby. Um, friend of foe. <laughs> There's a brief pause, and a voice rings out from the shadow that says, you step into the realm of Damashal, the great eater of storms, lord of annihilation, and demon master of this dominion. Leave now, or become devoured by his immense and terrible form. Does he sound full of <laughs> Make an insight check, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not great, 14. It's not easy to notice. Yeah, he's full of uh. Do we waste our time? Yeah. I mean, are we supposed to eradicate all of the evil? I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go and try to drag him out of whatever cubby hole he's in. Make a perception check as you enter this, this chamber filled with bones. Mm, not good, four. You look in the room, you have no idea where this thing is. You heard the voice boom from it, but you kind of push through the chains and stuff and the voice says, I said! Run away before it's too late! Please! <laughs> Please. How long have you been here? Since time eternal, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> We're hearing about a child here. Do you know anything about that? Make a persuasion check. That's much better. Uh, 21. Stepping out from this like cluster of, of bones that have kind of melted together as the, the fats of the bodies have solidified around it, he kind of pokes out at you. This sad looking demonic, demon creature, maybe about three feet off the ground, kind of scutters out. Hi! <laughs> I'm Damashal, Eater of Storms. Um, avatar form, much bigger and dangerous in true form. Um, yes, yes. You're looking for the child, right? <laughs> Seem to be. He's below, but the doors are closed and locked. You need a. Uh... And he reaches behind the bodies and pulls out this like stone circular seal. Says, you need this. So give it. How about we trade? I'm very hungry. Not a lot um. Around here to eat anymore. Any fresh flesh? Johnny! <laughs> <laughs> he, comes, he comes out around the way with like a small box and he's like, 
Oh, I found some. Yeah, yeah. Puts it in the in the <laughs> sash. Yes. Um. Someone in the room is asking for you. Pulls a blade out. Make a make a deception check. <laughs> What are you telling me? Go in the room. Make an intimidation check. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, big money. 17? Oh, 17. Good. He goes, oh. Of course, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, gotta keep you all safe. <laughs> he kind of creeps in with his dagger out. Walks into the room and sees uh, the the creature and goes, whoa, 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 "Kill it! Kill it! There's another one of them demons!" I nod and smile at our demon friend. Make oh, friends. Yeah. Be nice. For me. Uh, yeah. Don't okay. be rude. <laughs> the demon begins to walk <laughs> forward. <laughs> like, what you mean? I just Kill. close the door. No! 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 no. <laughs> the door closes here. And <laughs> screams out of a, a section of the upper. What you didn't notice is on the on the walls there are these like faint remaining elements of of uh, stained glass reliefs that are on the top. You see a hand, a bloody hand, go <laughs> like a terrible twist on the Titanic scene as it just blood smears down the glass. Hey, buddy, what you saw back there? That's not how people usually act. <laughs> Um, you don't have to, you know, we're gonna get some ice cream later. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> Spell slots are just crying. <laughs> you know, it started as a joke and then we just let it happen, so. Mm. I'm proud moments, of us. A few moments pass, it grows quiet and the door opens once more. Mm. And you see the squat demon come out, kind of picking elements of muscle from a freshly exposed bone and goes, well, thank you very much. That's a that's a fine a fine trade. Uh, good luck with the child. <laughs> and then tosses the stone relief to you, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna have leftovers for a little bit. Oh, hey, um, do you have any use for that bag of gold he had? Could we take that? Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. I believe Mordred was in that room, so he walks out and says. Blood spattered. <laughs> <face. laughs> that's true. Yeah. yeah. That was really something to see. <laughs> Let's go. All right, we go downstairs. Okay. We need to take care of him on the way out, though. Let's for sure. Yeah. 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 All righty. Let him enjoy his last meal. <laughs> Making your way to the double doors on the opposite <laughs> side. <laughs> there it is. You can see the large angelic reliefs both facing each other, arms meeting in the center, where the circular imprint currently awaits the seal that you were given. Placing it into it, the doors. <laughs> open and lead you into a large stone spiral staircase that descends out of view. I was so bad about Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> You're having guilt now? I found too late, I know, it's too late. It's Do really you want to cool. go back and kill him? Would that make you feel better? No, 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 okay, it's fine. Okay. Just, just take care of the child. Okay. We've got some reverse healing to do, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Partway down the stairs, you find an alcove with a stone fountain of some kind that's kind of just situated in the side. The water is still running after all this time. As you pass by at a quick glance, the waters are red mm. and thicker than the average liquid. Wine. Totally. Yeah, can I um, kind of touch it and feel it to my fingers? Sure. What's it taste like? Well, I'm feeling it first, hang yeah, on. Make sure you it's... taste it as well. All right, all right. Thick yeah, and, taste and it. Somewhat viscous. The smell is somewhat iron-like. What does it like, taste like, though? I can't believe you tasted it. Oh, so <laughs> what? What? <laughs> it's blood. Turns out this fountain bleeds. <laughs> Maybe it can die. You know. All right, let's go. All right. <laughs> Continuing down the spiral staircase. <laughs> I just like that. That's how they're bonding. <laughs> <laughs> That was pretty good, yeah. <laughs> At the base of the stairs, you find an open arched threshold that leads into a massive shrine, long since repurposed as a catacomb. 
The intricate walls are lined with stone reliefs of angels and demons fighting mid-battle, rising tall to the 30-foot ceiling above, where hundreds of still-lit candles fill every open pocket. Dual curving stairs rise against the sides of the wall to climb to a risen platform where a pulpit and altar sit on top to the back wall, far from where you look up. The center of the room holds a half dozen heavy, intricate stone tombs, carvings of ancient warriors carved atop the lids, a bit scattered in their positioning in the floor. The floor shines with thousands and thousands of gold pieces glittering in the light between the scattered piles of bones. The air suddenly grows incredibly cold, your breath immediately visible, the candles all flicker in unison, their flame shifting from yellow-orange to a dull blue, pale blue. You now see a spectral entity rise from the gold in the floor above. It's a child. A boy in his teenage years, his clothes dirty and tattered, his left leg seems to vanish past the knee. As he floats above within the room, <sighs> more imbeciles come to help me out. Great. The bigger the network, the easier the profit. You. See this depressingly small horde. It's nowhere near enough. Good health seems to always be a challenge to find, and you all look slightly less useless than the others. You want to live? Go. Get out there in the Western Kingdoms and bring me some real treasure. Kind of floats there awaiting a response. Oh, I don't know about you all, but I had no plans to go to the West. Mm. I also work for no one, so. Mm. Just make yourselves useful. Oh. I need gold. We will make Get ourselves me some. useful, darling. His face pouts a little bit. Why is it so hard to find help? Well, at least Johnny's still out there. <laughs> He'll bring me back some gold. I'm nowhere near close. What do you need it for, young one? You can see the, the kind of angry frustration in the face melt away for a second as the spirit's eyes go distant. I need to help her. She deserves it. I made a promise that I'd help her, and that this is nowhere near enough. I can't leave until I help her. And as that echoes through the chamber, you can see a spirit kind of flickers and grows wider, and you see the wind kind of whip up a bit. Who is she? Chilean. Are you going to help me or not? We are going to help you leave this mortal coil. Come, boy. Let's play. The spirit's eyes narrow, and you watch as the chamber's temperature drops even lower. Blue flames flicker in his spiritual eyes, and you watch as all the candles begin to dim. If you want to walk to your death, that's entirely up to you, armored boy. Fine. Let your spirit die in some ways like mine did. And you hear the rumbling as the bones begin to rise up and form. You watch as these massive skeletons begin to pull out of the hordes of gold. Not quite humanoid, larger, stranger, bipedal, but shouldn't be large, elongated skulls with curved horns, not unlike the one on your head, as you see massive bovine-like skeletons holding <sighs> large glaives rise, uh, uh, two of them to each side of this spirit. The cows. 
It's the cows. <laughs> you want to step against the spirit of Wurt? Then fine. Join me. Everyone roll initiative. <laughs> ah, Wurt. So, at the top of this, you see the spirit of this boy Wurt angrily begin to rise and extend his hands. You see him try and push upward, and it's almost like something's pulling him down, and he gets frustrated for a second. He's going to go ahead and glance towards you, Toro, and say, well, if Johnny's not going to help, I need someone else to help me. You! Make a wisdom saving throw for me. Uh, uh, saving throw? Correct. Come on. Oh, Cox. Keeps getting up in that. Ooh, that's real bad. I rolled a two. Ooh, a level ooh. three total. Ooh. Oh, wow. I think that probably saved. Yep. <laughs> three Blue four. flames now flicker matchingly in the eyes of Toro as you have become Wurt's thrall. You are charmed by him and now working on his side of the battle for the time being. <sighs> three cows. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. The right attire for the right occasion. <laughs> Kill them, please. He says to the other skeletons and continues to float up, seemingly resisting some sort of force that's holding him down, though he's still 30 feet up in the air. Um, that is going to bring us to Indra's go. In all of my arcane knowledge, would I know if physical or magic attack this ghost? Roll an arcana check. Okay. Arcana or religion, your call. Uh, what's 17 plus eight? Good enough. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> magic of all different kinds definitely seems to have an, an impact on spectral entities. Mm -hmm. uh, you would know that they probably, some physical strikes tend to not be as effective, mm -hmm. as well as like cold and poison, cold seeing as how they're an undead spirit. Good to know. So, thank you. What you got going? Uh, I am going to look at one of the Moo Moo men and cast <laughs> a ray of frost at it. Alrighty. Uh, which is a oh dang. Uh, does fifteen hit? Fifteen does hit. Dope. That is four d six. Five, nine, Last 10, you're on deck. 15 points of cold damage. 15 points of cold damage. And this target speed is also halved. Nice. Awesome. So one of the hell bovines, uh, it's now covered in frost and ice crystals across it, and you see it kind of like, it's having to move and push through the parts of its body where the joints are now frozen and locked. It's definitely slowed, and it's taken a, you know, a nice little hit to its body. Dope. That's all. Are you remaining there in the, in the kind of the stairway entryway? Um. How far am I from everything right You're now? about 20 feet from the two skeletal bovines. You are right next to Toro, and ah. the ghost is about 35 feet within the chamber. Um, seeing as Toro is ranged, I'm going to stay where I'm, I'm going to stay put for a bit. You got it. Okay. Finishing your turn, Indra. Laszlo, you're up. Toro, you're on deck. The opposite uh, minion, uh, I'm going to cast uh, Decrepify on. Ooh. Very nice. Uh, cursed creature within 60 feet uh, for four rounds. Their movement is halved, and any physical attacks they use deal half damage. Uh, it's a DC 15 constitution. Nice. At the end of their turn. Correct. So, it, so as you reach out, expend the essence, you watch as the shadows pierce inside of it and almost pull it to the ground. Like these tendrils of black and, and gray are now keeping it roped, and it's skeletal bone structure is now fighting against it, elements of it turning to dust by the contact. It's Both of these are pretty hindered at the moment. Well done. I'm going to send spell slots after that guy. <laughs> oh, spell slots! Uh, uh, he's, <laughs> he's running up to him. Uh, 10? 10 does not hit. It's like a soft pillow. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> more, more of a gentle caress of the thing. <laughs> And uh, yeah, that's the end of my turn. All right, finishing lesson soon. Toro, you're up. Okay. Your friends are your enemies. Your choice. Do I do I get to try and save from this at the top of my at turn? At the end of your turn. You at do. the end of my turn. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Okay. Um, who's who do I see in my nearest periphery? You're right next to Indra. You are like right next to all your friends, essentially. 
You guys are still standing in the 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 stairway where you stand. So they're like, you have to pick your litter. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. I'm gonna roll to see. I'm gonna say five, ten. I'm gonna attack uh, uh, Mordred. Go for it. <laughs> so, um, as you're bearing down, looking at this, getting ready to charge in. Wait, what are you? <laughs> <laughs> Moo. <laughs> I'm gonna do hungering arrow. I can't get out the way. <laughs> two, two hits. Oh, I rolled low. That's a gif if I've ever heard. <laughs> can't get, get out, out the way. way. Oh. Okay, so um, the first one is a ten to hit, which I don't think hits. <laughs> the next one is a fifteen. <laughs> Miss. Both of them Both impact in the shield, okay. no impact. I rolled a, a nine and a, and a three. Great. All right, now go ahead and roll another wisdom saving throw. <laughs> or no, no, wait, an eight, uh, eight plus nine, 17. No. Right? Am so I doing this right? Yes, eight plus nine would be 17. So 17, yeah. but still no. Okay, still so no. no, both miss. All right. And Fire choice. Toro! Toro! <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh no! <laughs> I'll allow it. Oh, no. <laughs> Things. Oh, I'll allow it. <laughs> You're <laughs> Toro. <laughs> um, I will do my bonus action to uh, do uh, spin discipline to do shadow power. So every okay. time I attack, I heal myself. So you watch now as the blue glowing in Toro's eyes, these black shadow wings kind of appear from the back, these like black tendrils in the shape of wings, and this kind of aura of black energy surrounds her. Just pouring out from under the mask. The helm. All right, that finishes your go, Toro. Make, go ahead and make a wisdom saving throw for me, please. Um, that was so, so eight. Is you can left. it. Come on. All right, come on. Big money. Big money. Oh my God, no, four. <laughs> Rolled a three. Hell yes. Okay. No. Uh, <laughs> that was small money. Small money. Four dollars. <laughs> four dollars. <laughs> no. How are you supposed to buy chicken nuggets? No, don't any, stop. Are there any pots in this room? <laughs> <laughs> I just go over some kicking pots <laughs> angrily. Finishing Toro's turn, uh, the two hell bovine skeletons begin to lurch forward. They're both slowed and can only get to the very front line, which means their only target is going to be you at the moment, since you're the one in front. Uh, so by, by slowing them down, they can't get to any of the meteor pieces, unfortunately. So both of them swing towards you. Um, so they uh, both have the large glaives. One of them... Two glaive. Uh, that is, yeah, that's a 24 to hit. That does kind of hit. Indeed, you take... Ooh, 13 points of physical damage Woo! from the one that is slowed by you. The other one, that's going to be a, a 19 to hit. Hits. Hits again. This one, however, is decrepified by you, which means you would take 11, reduced to five points of physical damage from it. They both also are jailers, so you watch as shush, suddenly I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Jailers? Uh-uh. And you make Real a wisdom low. saving throw. Real low. Uh, that is a five. Your movement is reduced to zero until the end of the next oh. turn. I don't need movement. Crit fail. <laughs> Crit fail. Your movement is also to zero. You're both locked into place by some sort of strange arcane power, and your feet cannot move off the ground. No. Um, that finishes their turn. That brings us to Mordred and Remy. All right, as a bonus action, I will recite more scripture from the church and use laws of justice to grant myself and allies within 30 feet resistance to cold, fire, and lightning damage. Uh, and I will use my action to consecrate the ground we stand on. And for the next four rounds, we will heal. At the start of our turns, we get back 1d6 plus two, so at the start of your turns. You've got it. All right. Have pity, they are all Moomin beings. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, no. How, long, no. how long did you have that? How long did you have it? Like five the minutes. Great <laughs> <laughs> for the right turn. All righty, finishing your go, Mordred, unable to move from your space. Yep. You slammed your shield into the ground. You watch as this arcane circle boof, apparates out in a, in a, a space around uh, Mordred, and as it does, you feel kind of the soft divine energy beginning to close any wounds as they begin to arrive. Remy, what are you doing? Well, first I'm going to heal three points. Yeah. There you go. Um, and then I'm gonna run up behind the uh, bovine that's attacking Mordred. 
Actually, right. Mordred's probably got it handled. I'm gonna run up <laughs> behind Laszlo. Okay. Just seem a little bit smaller. But both of you are actually pretty hardcore, aren't you? I'm pretty up, actually. And I'm gonna run up behind you. <laughs> All right, the one attacking him. All right. It's not, it's not gonna kill him anyway. Um, and I'm gonna, as I'm running up, Squish, turn into my crocodile form. You got it. And I'm gonna maul. Go for it, maul. Whoa, that was aggressive. Uh, plus nine, so 18. 18 does hit. All right. Eleven points. Eleven points of damage. Alrighty. As you reach out, transforming, you reach out with your claws and bite towards it, and you take a chunk of its bone off. You can see like part of the ribs now broken on the inside, but it's still holding itself together. <laughs> uh, well done. Does that finish your go? Yeah. Alrighty. That now brings us to the top of the round. Does Wurt's go? Wurt is now shouting out into the field. Chilean, I'm trying, but they're getting in my way. I'll stop you, for her sake. And as he raises his hands into the sky, the wind begins to whip up and the gold begins to pick up in the wind faster and faster. Suddenly, you're all being pelted by a storm of gold coins. I need everybody in the space to go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw against his affluent poltergeist ability. What we love most is betraying us. Terrible. Including me, I'm assuming. Including you, yeah. And including the bovines, it's well, everything in this room. That was a good roll, though. I got an 18. 18 19. Is, okay. Natural 20. <gasps> nice. Ooh. Natural 6. <laughs> Wait. 23. Is this how the pots get full? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So success on that one. So you take uh, what would have been 23 points of uh, physical damage. Instead, you take uh, 11. Sheebus! What'd you roll? Natural 20 for 22. 11 points of physical damage. Uh, six. 23 so points of physical Mortar's damage. Down. <gasps> oh no! Is the Crusader. ground still consecrated? Avenge me! The consecration stays. Okay, oh, thank goodness. Good. Don't wait, does Mordred. He will heal as he. At the top of. If it the... comes to his turn, it will. Yeah. Uh oh. Oh, wow. oh no. Mess with the bull, you get the horns. 19. Do Eight. I have to roll for spell slots? Dab. Yes. <laughs> uh, 13. Dab up. 13. Dab up and away from me. So you take 11 points of, of damage. Oh. And as you're like shielding it, you look past the storm of gold coins whooping past, and you look out and you can see spell slots turns around to you with this like. If a skeleton could make a sad <laughs> face, no, it so reaches. You. <laughs> In that moment, Laz, like Laszlo realizes, like you've been my son this entire time. <laughs> Only time. The jaw, <laughs> it's torn off. The arm, <laughs> torn off, and eventually the skeleton is just pulled yeah. apart by the pelting gold coins. Gone. 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 <laughs> Twenty-three total. Twenty-three. You take eleven points of uh, physical damage and make another saving throw. And make another saving Correct. throw. Okay. So I'll bring it to 27. Just a, a wisdom oh, saving I'm throw, saying. you mean? Wisdom saving throw, yeah. <laughs> Roll to three again. Nope. Still under his guise. All right, cool. Oh my God. <laughs> so that finishes Wurt's turn. You can see, like, now this, this, like, angst in his face, this, like, deep sadness and anger, and is just right now conflicted in this moment. That finishes his turn. Indra, you're up. Laszlo, you're on deck. Uh, So, back to the 15 feet thing. Um, the bovines, they are within 15 feet of each other, like next to each other. They are, they both swarmed towards Mordred, yes. Right. Is you it possible? might, there's a chance you could hit uh, a Remy, but if you want to risk it. I'm behind. You're behind, okay. Then I, I rescind that. Um, I or go for it, your call. You know, <laughs> nah. <laughs> down. Oh, you said one. I get a d6 plus how much? Plus the, two. Plus, plus two? two. All right. I'm going to put that. Ooh, six. Uh, and I'm going to Ray of Frost at the same one. Okay. Go ahead and roll an attack again. 16 plus 10, 26. Did that hit him? It definitely hit. Wonderful. So now it's 5d6. <laughs> the damage is increasing because you're focusing the beam. Yep. Exactly. That's five, right? Yep. That's six. Five, five, that's 16, plus six. It's uh, 22. 22, 24. 
24, 24 points of, of chili. So with that, the, the the first bovine form you've been focusing this beam on, you watch as you're pushing and just focusing this intense arcane blast of frozen death onto it, and as it does, the ice builds up, builds up, and builds up around it. It's pushing forward and pulling its glaive into the air, and it's about to bring it down before it freezes solid, and then oh. as the coins hit it, it breaks away into thousands of tiny frozen bone fragments. Yeah. Dope, 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 dope. All right, Lazo, you're up. Do I have a clean like line of uh, a clean line to hit that other bovine? Uh, with a little bit of movement, you would. Okay. Can I take that little bit of movement? Sure. I, oh. Shift to the side, and you now can see it. Uh, it's it's kind of between Mordred and uh, Remy, and so you're now like kind of hitting them from a, a flank position. Great. Uh, I'm gonna undo my coat real quick, and Laszlo reveals like his rib cage. And it starts coming out and twisting into a, a very long spear, uh, right at this guy. All right. So I'm casting bone spear on him. You got it. Go ahead and uh, for that. He has a. He has a save. DC 14. Yeah. That's right. Dexterity save. No, natural six. Ooh. Does not save. 11 and 11. 22. 22 points of damage. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> That's Maybe. just enough, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so as you come out, you form it, and then <clears throat> the ribs come out and form into this like spiraling drill, almost magical spear, and as it blasts into the side, you watch as it shatters the entire midsection. The pelvis and spinal column are just gone, and the rest of it kind of standing there <clears throat> hits the ground and just falls apart into pieces of bone. Yeah, and uh, as it goes down, under his breath he goes, you killed spell slots. <laughs> That's how origin stories start, guys. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Finishing your turn. Toro, you're up. So, uh, okay. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20. I'm going to do it again. See who I hit. I had natural 20. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, now. On, on who to pick. <laughs> so. How much hatred you got? Uh, 10 hatred. Okay. So, I'm going to uh, hungering arrow again. Um, great rolls, just <laughs> great rolls. Um, 19 for the first one. That hits. I want to go ahead and do damage. Great roll, 10 damage. Uh, okay. And then um, 23 for the second one. That for hits. For the second hit. Nine damage. Okay. That, um, that's cool. And I'm gonna spend. We're still gonna be friends if you spend this. That's fine. I'm gonna spend <laughs> six hatred to uh, toss down a spike trap and back up. All right. So after you fire twice into Laszlo's side, you're like, ah! Reacting. You don't even see it at the moment, but you slip and throw this little trap right underneath Laszlo that he does not even notice. Oh, okay. so sad. I'm gonna hold. It's All right. Okay. That finishes your turn. Uh, both of the Hellbow Vines are destroyed. Mordred and Remy, you're roll? I get a roll, right? To see if I save? You do, yes. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Big, money, big money. Okay, okay. There's a 15 plus my wisdom save for 16 total. You break free of the influence Woo! of Wurt. So I'm about to, I back up and I'm about to hit the <laughs> detonation on the trap and I'm gonna go. <laughs> Perfect. Alrighty, that finishes your go. What are you guys doing? Well, I uh, heal. I rolled a six on a d6, so I'll get eight hit points back. Indeed. So you heal and come to consciousness uh, on the ground. Uh, ooh, um, the wind's still whipping around you, coins, and you can just barely see above the glowing spectral form of this infuriated child. All right, well, there was nothing I can do to get up there, so I just. Am I still held in place from. No, the. the Bovines dead. Bovines are dead, so I can oh. move, right? Indeed, yeah, you're. So I'll you're, use half my movement to return to standing. Get back up. <laughs> um, and I will continue to recite the laws of justice to keep up our resistance, because it's about all I can do. Maybe Jillian's under the gold. He keeps, <laughs> he keeps pointing down. <clears throat> Should make um, a history check for me. <laughs> Ten. Ten? You've, hmm, it's hard to place, but you feel like you've come across a Jillian before. You can't quite pinpoint it, though. She did sound familiar. Jillian Anderson <laughs> of the X-Files. <laughs> so that's your turn? That's it, yeah. Alrighty. What are you doing, Remy? The only thing I can try to do is uh, wind shear, so I'm gonna hold up my arm again and 
a spectral blade is going to shoot out towards the child. You've got it. Uh, that's a 27 to hit. That does hit. Uh, 3d8. Seventeen points. Seventeen points, nice. So it does strike him, but the wind shear doesn't impact him as heavily as you would hope. The spectral form seeming resistant to a lot of physical damage. Yeah, I um, can only do physical damage, guys. Sorry about that. And so he is still sitting strong, angry, and the storm is still whipping around. That finishes your turn? I'm gonna... <laughs> Go with me on this. Okay. I'm going to send my swarm of insects as a bonus action. Okay. But I'm going to swarm them down and under the gold. Searching okay. Searching for something. Okay. We'll come to you next round then. Okay. All right, coming to the top of the round, it's now Wart's turn again. He's going to continue to whip this into a frenzy. Everyone, once again, make a dexterity saving throw. Ah. Go down, we're Boy. Are you going to go back down again? Probably. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's bad. <clears throat> well, actually, it might be okay. 15? 19 points of physical damage. Is that halved? No, she's, she failed. Ooh, <laughs> fails. Okay. Uh, I fail. 19 points of physical damage. 19. Uh, you take uh, nine points of physical damage. Mordred is down. Oh, Mordred! Uh, 21. You take nine points of physical damage. I failed 15, so. Take uh, 19 points of physical damage. You're getting this is this is turning very badly. You're getting the sense that on a on a, a physical feature combat on combat scenario, you are at a severe disadvantage, and this is already turning against you. Mm -hmm. That brings us to Indra. Um, so I'm going to start opening a tear in the universe. Okay. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to say before I destroy all of your treasures and your gold, because I can and I will. What do you want us to do? Make a persuasion check. No, oh, I'm good at that. Come on, come on. Come on, Indra. 13. <laughs> <laughs> He's, at this point, is just in this, this, this rage at this point and kind of glances over towards you and goes, ah, you have already passed the point of being helpful by destroying my friends. What if we get you more friends? Just bring me gold for her. All you can find. She is too good for all of you. Who is she? We can't help you if you don't tell us things. You did Jillian, hear Jillian, obviously. You heard Jillian earlier. And who is Jillian? Or make a history check. Nah. <laughs> come on. Fifteen. Fifteen. You did come across a Jillian in Chaldeum once. She was raising a small child. This is a few years ago. Oh no, mommy. Oh. Um, she was raising a small child. The tear won't close, but Indra will kind of like lower her staff. Is that your mom? No, not my mom. I, sorry for assuming, sorry for assuming. That ends your turn. He is not happy about that. Oh God. <laughs> What are you doing, Laszlo? Uh, how far up is he? Uh, about 30 feet from you, 35 30, feet. Oh, it's too far. You can move to get closer if you want. Even, um, yeah, if he's floating, I wanted to cast Death, uh, Death Nova again, uh, the poison, but it's 20 feet from me. Yeah, it's not going to reach him. If my hair is really high. Would I... <laughs> <laughs> not quite, not Jump quite. Jump up in the air. <laughs> um, yeah, then, I'm gonna try to. There's nothing I really do. This is all physical. I'm gonna bone spear him. Okay. Yeah. Go for it. All right. So he. Dexterity save. Does not save. Go ahead and roll damage. Okay. Uh, so that's a nine plus nine. Eighteen. Eighteen. All right. The spear strikes him once again. The spectral form kind of shimmers as it hits, but as a physical damage source, it's not doing quite as much as you'd want. That finish your turn. That finishes the turn. Toro, you're up. Okay, um, I'm going to use my discipline to cast Mark for Death on him. Okay. And then, so that brings me back down to 13. And then I'm going to do, spend, um, spend 12 Hatred to do Rapid Fire. 
So that brings me down to three hatred. Okay. All right, so six attacks at him. Go for it. Um, all plus five to hit. So first attack is an 18, a natural 18, so 23. That hits. Should I do these one at a time? Just roll all your attacks up front. Okay, so that hits. Ooh, that's not as good. That is a 13. Misses. That's even worse. Misses. Uh, 15. Misses. Oh my god. What is this attack for? This is the fifth attack now. Oh my god, a natural one. Misses, last attack. Uh, okay, and a, a 13, so uh, 18 total. Yeah, so two hits. Oh, yikes. Up six, okay. Uh, 2d6 on this one, plus two, okay. So that is eight damage on the first one. Okay. Okay, and uh, 12 damage on the second. Okay, so 20 damage, half. 20 damage total. Physical damage not quite impacting heavily on a spiritual entity. Okay. This is not looking <laughs> not looking good. That finishes your turn, Toro. Mordred Remy, you're up. Okay, Mordred comes to again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How you doing? Um, as a bonus action, I will do Laws of Justice for everybody, but then I will um, say, come, child, perhaps we can leave this place together, and I will provoke him. Okay. So he has to make a DC Wisdom of 14. Natural one. <gasps> So he's got to come for me. Yes, he does. And I'll just stay on the ground, smiling up. <sighs> okay. Remy, what are you doing? I'm going to say Jillian. I've heard of a Jillian. Make a persuasion check. Big money. With advantage, using okay. the name. Oh, okay. Seventeen. You watch as the anger and frustration in the, in the middle of this child spirit's face goes. You do. Where? How? Where is she? The coins begin to slow down and fall around. Calm down, and we can tell you. Looking back at Mordred. <laughs> The coins begin to slow even further, and you're no longer being pelted like the middle of a terrible storm, and more just a gentle battering. As the spirit glides down, the candles flicker brighter once more and kind of floats there. The once extremely intense and angry, wrathful spirit now looks more age appropriate. This child entity kind of looks at you with this kind of snot nosed, mid teens face and goes, What? How? How did you get taken from her? All of us did here. And they destroyed the town, but... I mean, she got away in time, I think. I wasn't ready, the project wasn't ready, I was saving. It's not enough, I'm... I have to keep saving, make sure she's okay. Child. We can take you to her. I this can't... is... More gold than she could ever want. I can't save myself from this. I can't leave. Not until I have enough. She's... She's worth all of it. Roll religion check for me, if you would, Mordred. Oh, very nice, 20. Often, wrathful spirits that are left behind are bound by unfinished business, or the thought of unfinished business, or something is binding them there. You're not certain what the sense here is, but based on the words that he's saying, he does not feel he can leave. How much gold do you think you have here? 13,261. Not including what you brought here. And what were you trying to build for her? A future? Tristram couldn't provide for her. I was planning to take her with me when I got away. I know she's a little older, but I'd grow up eventually. You were in love with her. 
No. Just wanted to make sure she was okay. Can we look in on her for you? Make a persuasion check. 21. Would you do that? Would you bring her this? He gestures to the gold in the chamber. If it will bring rest to you in this place. The spirit kind of glides to the ground, floating just inches above it. And mimics sitting on the edge of one of the tombs, and this wrathful spirit, more than you've noticed at this point, just looks pitiful. We're hoping to rid Tristram of this pain and suffering and rebuild. This could go a long way towards that life. Happy life for Tristram. I don't care about Tristram anymore. This place is ruined. Too much evil's happened here, and it's just going to keep getting worse. But if Tristram, you can. Tristram, Smistram. This gold's for Jillian. We'll take it to Jillian. Okay. Okay. And with that, you see the spirit begin to fade and drift into the ground. All the rest of the gold, ting, 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 falls around the stone. And it's hard to explain, but in that moment, it feels like a, a tension, a thickness in the air seems to lighten. And with that, you begin to gather the coin and the treasure and all the valuables that have been gathered over time by whatever grave robbers and tomb raiders and such that have found their way into the sub-cathedral region. I kind of dig under where he was perched at the top of the mound. Is there anything of importance under there as to why he was there? Yeah, swarm full of bugs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Truth. What you do find is a, a small locket. Mm. With a, uh, a drawing. A not very well done drawing, but it looks to be a woman. Okay. Young, dark hair. I show it to Indra and Remy. Does this look like the Julian you remember? I don't, I, I just recognize the name. I really don't have any idea. Uh, does it? It does, it's poorly drawn. Yeah. You can, it can kind of pass. It's like the Ramona Flowers drawing. Yeah, yeah it's right up. Just... Yeah, yeah. Put it over my neck. All right, I guess we're going to be messengers. Mordred shoves an empty pot into Lazlo's hands. Oh, this. On. No! <laughs> <laughs> For the hours it takes to gather the treasure that is left here, you finally have the last gold piece in your grasp, and as you begin to exit up the staircase, the voice once more creeps in. She gets every coin, or I'll follow you for the rest of my days. I'm not above being a little for eternity. And that's where we'll end the session. Oh. <laughs> well, you're going to have to follow us to Vegas because we're going to go! We go straight to a priest. We all get exercise. We, get <laughs> we take all the gold. That historically goes over really well yeah. in the land of sanctuary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> new friends, oh, it's you know? Great. Yeah. It's great. Justice for spell slots. Yeah, none of, you guys showed, <laughs> none of you guys showed up for spell slots funeral. I don't know why. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we already buried him once. What can I say about spell slots? He was the best among us. <laughs> he was a dirty little Kanye fan, but we loved him all the same. <laughs> I bury uh. him like this. He's <laughs> <laughs> next to his face. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, thank you guys for joining me into this this rapid Yay. dungeon delve in the world of Diablo. Uh, ran a little over. Thank you for your patience, everyone. Uh, thank you all for watching. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did, being ridiculous and dark and silly and fun and killing monsters. Um, and grave robbers. And grave, and grave robbers. robbers. Yeah, you guys gonna hit the gamut today. It worked out well. Yeah. 
Uh, if you want to watch this campaign again or check out any of the other amazing free content as part of uh, BlizzCon line, visit BlizzCon.com. Thank you for having us. Love you very much. And is it Thursday yet? We'll get that treasure goblin. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>